Has there ever been a time where somebody's caught you slipping? Like, and they caught me. Like, they saw me pissed <laughs> off. They saw me <laughs> slipping. Like, they like saw me. Wa- walked around the back of the car and just like, like, that's a good question for everybody. What was yeah. I don't remember. What the you asked was. The I know. That was like <laughs> fucking five minutes ago. I don't ago. remember what the question was. It is super easy to get along uh, when you just keep your head out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. Today's guest is Bitchin' Rides hosts Dave Kendig and Kevin Shield. Well, what's up? Thanks you for guys, having us in studio. Absolutely. You guys have been on a, a one full episode. You've been a special guest on another episode, but this is the first time we've done it in studio. I know, and I'm, I'm pumped it's to be here. awesome. Same here. I've it, only seen pictures of this place. It's badass. Yeah, it is it's real. Still, Everyone that yeah. has not been here needs to get here. It's a green screen. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a green screen. It's legit. It's just, yeah, it's all dude, real. For, for the other guests, I mean, dude, we, Dave and Kevin, they came all the way out here to Chicago only for this. Right. right? Yeah, that's yeah, going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to make an effort because they're way better in person. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah, I agree. And, and we're busy people, so if we can get here, anybody can get so here. So you're heading back home tonight. Yeah, we're jumping happened. on a plane yeah. and heading yeah. back. Yeah, came yeah. out here yeah, just we're going to make sure your check cashes first. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're grabbing shit on the way out. Uh, <laughs> so what's been going on, guys? I mean, it's about time to debut a car, right? I mean, you haven't done anything in, what, a couple of years? You haven't brought anything new out? Yeah, yeah. It's just been... Just been the in the lab, in the lab doing stuff. <laughs> <In> the lab. <laughs> it has been uh, absolutely a whirlwind for us. Um, certainly the last uh, five years has been uh, business as normal. And then some, you know, having a, having a, a very active shop, 27,000 square feet, building 16 to 20 cars at any given time. And uh, roughly 36 to 43 employees, depending on the time of the year. Right. And then on top of that, filming the TV series and hiding mm-hmm. a very important vehicle that we finally got an opportunity to build something to compete at Detroit. You guys um, hid that well. Yeah. We've yeah. had, I don't, how many, how many road tours do you think of? <clears throat> yeah, we, yeah, we, and, yeah. That room in the back, that's where it was the whole time. <laughs> People were so close. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I mean, we always worried about somebody just taking a sneak shot and, and then putting it out there. And uh, you know, it was something that was really heavy on. I mean, I'm a, I'm a show and tell kind of guy. I mean, you have to see these guys, they lock the room when everybody else leaves and I'll have a couple of friends over having beers over in the, the assembly side. And, uh, I'll go. Hey, oh, I was going to say, how did you, a, how did you know that key. the room was locked on Thursday <laughs> went, night? How I'm did like, you know? Oh, where do they keep the key? <laughs> Damn it. I just wanted to, uh, you know, but, uh, no. So they, they successfully kept me, uh, out of there from showing people, but no, but nobody would have, you know, blown it out to the public and stuff, but it was, uh, it was really kind of cool. You know, I mean, this is why we do this stuff, right? We do it for ourselves. We do it to impress other people, to, to, to set off in a direction of showing somebody what we can do with a car. And uh, to not be able to show that really sucked you mm-hmm. know, until now. And then finally, we get it out of the bag. And we take it to Detroit last week, and uh, we rang the bell. That was awesome. Yeah, it was great. Well, was for so anybody awesome. that maybe is possibly living under a rock, or we do have those seven now. Australian customers. Seven. It does take time for uh, news to travel. Yeah, they so there. they, no, they're they, ahead of us. Yeah, they've already they heard it, this. They get it oh, before it actually oh. happens. Okay. Yeah, so they're already on the next year's Riddler winner, then, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you can call them. You can call them. I had good friends down there actually in the award ceremony. I was actually making phone calls to Australia to find out who the fuck wins. <laughs> they're, they're fourteen hours ahead of us. <laughs> so we are in a very unique position, specifically with this podcast and the timely nature of being right off of this fucking historic win, something you've got. I'm, I'm super interested in really taking a deep dive into this particular car's process, how it comes about. we got a lot of shops that listen for advice and stuff and looking for, there's so much to dig into that I really, we've never done that kind of deep dive of from inception to working yeah. with the design to all the stuff, keeping it quiet and all the way up until what just happened a fucking week ago. Right. So really fucking, I'm excited to do that. Yeah, you got the. You want the short version? No, no, no. We want the long yeah, version. Yeah, I'll just give version. you the real quick short version. How do you build a winning car without a roadster shop chassis? Well, it takes five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, touche. So hey. this is the long way around the around the horn. But uh, that thing yeah. is nuts, dude. I got to tell. Like, I've always been like so stoked for you guys. All your fucking success. I'm a huge fan. Never jealous. And the first time I think maybe I was like. 
those motherfuckers <laughs> was when I see this thing roll out of nowhere and then win a goddamn Riddler award. And you're like, dude, what? Is there nothing these guys can't do? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And the thing is, is it's instantly, like, you know, we've all been to Detroit. We've all followed. We, you you see those cars all the time. You know, mm-hmm. so you see that eight. You see the stuff. And it's always the one where you're instant. You instantly know. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, but, so that's the winner. Right. There's other times where you're kind of like, well, these co and then it sometimes is controversial on the win, but when it's clear, it's always clear. It's clear. Yeah. That's flattering. We, you know, we heard that when we were in Detroit too. And it's, it was one of those things. It's like, you know, I want to just be, I just want to be one of the guys. I want to just be treated like anybody else. We brought our best. And it'll be what it'll be. Like I, I was very humbled to hear that, but like I said, we just wanted to compete and we'll find out on Sunday. Right. Right. Well, we get there and you know, secretly deep down the side, you go, we got a shot at, and then we got there, and when we finally had a chance to walk around and look at the other eight when they were introduced, there were some nice cars there. I mean, there were some really hard, hardcore cars and, and some great design elements, and, and all of that were utilized in all of those cars, but we had something, I think, just a little bit more special, and, you know, I don't ever jinx myself. I'll just wait until the very end and see what happens. You know, it's always up to the judges. Um, but when we won and then we talked to the judges, they were like, yeah, we've never seen anything <laughs> like this. I'm like, Oh, that's flattering. Yeah, so. it's su- yeah, it was super, super flattering. Because you never know. I mean, and like mm-hmm. I said, we we dump our, our heart and our soul into these cars, and you don't know who's coming, and you don't know what the judges are going to see. You don't you don't have any idea. They may just be like, this, well, that looks easy. And, you know, they, they might not see or know the difficulty in what it took to build this car. You know, a lot of people were saying, hey, this just looks like one of your CF1s. And yeah, what like, number is this? Nah, is it's like pretty on? different than that. Yeah. So Yeah, there's actually no pieces from a CF1 on that car. So, yeah, they were all custom. So, uh, yeah, I mean, really the inception of the car, uh, we met, uh, I met, uh, doing an, uh, a meet and greet at uh, Chicago a couple, five years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I, I'm sorry, actually, I met him in uh, Pittsburgh at the Autoram. And then two weeks later, I had some pinned up uh, renderings I took out to Dave Maxwell to let him look at it here in Chicago at the World of Wheels show. And uh, he said, you know, I want you to build me something to compete at uh, Detroit. And I was like, cool, what do you want to build? And he goes, I have no idea. The best customer, man. I know. When it's like, he goes, do you have any ideas? And I was like, uh, that's kind of what I do. I'd love to come up with something. I said, let me pin something up for him. So when I came out here in a couple of weeks after we met, I showed him a version basically of my CF one with a roof line on it. Cause I wanted to do that as one of my CF one body styles. And he's like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Dave. He says, but do you think anybody's going to really, uh, pick a, a fiberglass car to win the Riddler. And I was like, I'm not going to build it out of fiberglass. I'm going to build it out of aluminum. He was like, really? So at that point, we were basically going to build a body and put it on a chassis is what I'd really kind of thought in a V8. And of course, when I get back and everybody's creative juices and I start showing the pictures to Will and Kev and to the guys, we were like, you know, this is kind of what I'm thinking. I want to do something really exotic. And then Will had this idea of making it a unibody. And I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. I said, you know what? There's plenty of room. I said, why don't we do one of those uh, Australian V12 LSs? That's a 9.2 liter based on a 6.0 stroke. Well, you got a big engine bay. You need to fill it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a perfect yeah, right. fit. And so then we started going, okay, well, let's uh, <clears throat> let's do a transaxle then. Cool. So I bought a bunch of drivetrain out of a, a 17 uh, Z06 oh, with a thousand miles. It was a theft recovery. Put the transaxle in the car. And, and of course, we can't just leave it looking like that. So then we start messing around with sand castings, which we've been doing for our CF1s. All of the trim is all sand casted out uh, west of us. But we're working with a, a, a bunch of guys down at Racecast in Australia. Uh, and then, of course, COVID hits. Everything takes another year, year and a half. So we were yeah. behind, actually. We, we, had, we had plans of having this car much earlier. But, you know, time frame and everything else. But I think, luckily, because of the creative juices and the length of time that we've all been working together and the trust we had from the client and the understanding that we worked together very well. It was like one thing after another, all of a sudden we've got a uh, lateral single coil overs, Indy car styled F1 styled front and rear suspension. We've got control arms that are like 27 inches long on the lowers. It's mounted to the oil pan. I mean, the thing is just, yeah, a, that's a, that's yeah. one of the crazy things about it, is all the suspension hangs off of the engine. Yeah. So Stress like the lower really control there. arm uh, is mounted to the oil pan. The upper is kind of mounted to this front cover. The alternator and the starters buried in the bell housing. It's got an electric water pump, so there's nothing on the front except the balancer. That's it. And it's all hidden and covered. You but know. the inside of that nose cone is also finished and, and perfected. 
it's all chromed and polished and detailed. So yeah. if you put a light or a, a camera into that nose cone, I mean, it's just as nice as the rear suspension that's in the rear luggage. At the very beginning when you, you're, you're running that CF1 with a, with a roof line, right? And that's your initial kind of the birth of that idea. Y'all are bouncing stuff around. Then you kind of hone that de- design a little bit more, right? And you start getting how clear was that picture in your head before you started forming body panels of exactly cove lines? And so was it crystal clear? Was it foggy mm-hmm. enough to like, all right, we're we're running down this direction? And how many times? I'm very always very interested in this. On it clears up along the way, or is it crystal clear? And then that sets some very specific guidelines that you've got to fabricate too? Well, first, that's a great question. So those things always, uh, always kind of morph. Especially over this know, amount of time. Exactly. Well, you know, the CF1s, basically, if you look at a 53 Corvette, we've taken three inches out right behind the front wheel well to zero in front of the rear wheel well. So it's a wedge channeling or sectioning. And so I kind of did the same thing on, on, the, on this uh, Riddler car. Uh, I wanted to kind of give that nose. So the height of the top of the fender to the nose to the lower part of, uh, of the front face is actually stock. But what, when you look at the cars now, because we've taken that three inches out, it actually lines up really close to the same uh, height as the uh, rocker, but it's very natural. Um, the length and doors, but stock wheelbase, I think is another really big key that's kind of the same as the CF1s because you can actually get in and out of the car really easy without eating the steering wheel. Uh, the roof line is very low, um, extremely low, which is really nice. It's actually taller than a CF1 Speedster windshield, and it's about the same as our Cabriolets. Um, the, the roof line had a lot of, you know, kind of Viper-esque stuff, but it also worked really well with doing the rear windows where it has a lot of uh, the V-taper. Yeah, and, it's uh, got like Aston. Aston Martin. It's got Absolutely. Gia <clears throat> in yeah, like the same. side. There's just so, but it's not like well, reminiscent of, it's like, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. It's not inspired by homage. it's reminiscent right, right. of. It's paying yeah. homage, right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of like Scagaletti, there's Pen and Farina design elements that I've kind of incorporated in the car because I always really thought that, you know, really, if you think about it, Corvette was really our first supercar, sure. right? And it has a lot of that same vintage racing heritage and stuff as some of the Ferraris and Alfa Romeo and that kind of stuff. And so I really wanted to, to do the what ifs. My entire career designing cars has always been what if. What if Corvette, when it first came out, had the option for a fastback? That's what it would look like. And of course, paying a little bit of homage as well to 1954 Motorama when they did the Corvair um, concept car. Basically, it was a fastback version of the Corvette. And so I wanted to actually name the car a Corvair, but my daughter, she says, I'm not going to name it after some fucking piece of shit rear engine <laughs> GM car, are you? And I was like, good. That was good advice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was good advice. <laughs> but anybody that would have understood it would yes. have probably jumped on it. When, and and I kind of back to your question, Josh, on that is I think that Dave sees exactly what he wants as an artist, and I'm. I'm like the I'm like different than that. I can't see it until I can. It's kind of there. Does that make sense? And then yep. I'm more of like a build to it or do what it takes to get there. But you know, you ask Dave, hey, what do you think of this roof line? Or are we in the right ballpark? He knows exactly where to go, up or down or in or out or whatever we need to do. Because as far as like proportions, the car is dialed. I would have never without you know without Dave. You you just don't have that. It's weird because I was thinking about it. We finally got it on the ground for the first time in the shop. It was badass. We're getting ready to roll it, and it's small. And I'm like, "Gosh, did we build this car just too small? <laughs> should have like been, should have been down. like, yeah, should have been like an this scale plus a quarter, like ooh." And then you know, as you kind of get a company to the car, it, it's right. The proportions are right. So, and uh, we talk about this a, a lot, and we never get like too awful deep into it. But I'm, we we talk about it internally and stuff. There's no right or wrong answer, but I'm always curious because from a designer standpoint, you could have that vision in your head crystal clear, right? And then you can put it, you can put pen to paper, you could do it digitally, you could do whatever. You could have a quote unquote blueprint and you could do it to scale. You could do everything. Sometimes when that design is so crystal clear and you feel like you've uh, articulated your design on paper for everybody to follow, it sometimes doesn't allow any type of venturing outside the box along the way. So sometimes you do a, a sweep line or you do this, or you stand back at a view that you hadn't rendered and you see that tail light and that top run and you kind of do the head and you're like, mm, mm. I could change that a little bit. Sometimes you, you're so stuck in, that's what it is. No, it looks right from the side profile. It has to look like right from this. We're not going to deviate from right. that. Where the, vice versa, you could be a cloudy picture of like, 
you know, this kind of sweep line. And then as you start building, you're kind of like, oh shit, you know, that kind of does inter those intersect weird and start doing it. So I'm always like, especially on a build of five years, so many different employees, right. Involved and stuff. And guys want to interject. You want to keep everybody happy with their ideas. And there might be good ones that come along the way that you're like, man, I, I hadn't envisioned that or small stuff, right. right We're right, getting right. in the weeds, but, right, right. but windshield, you know, lower reveal. You're like, man, actually that needs to come down because it needs to intersect around with the cowl a little bit better like that. And I'm always interested in how many of those changes happen along the way. And as you guys know, and everybody listening, some of those changes are like drastic They're very from drastic. a cost yeah. standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, one of the big design elements that is changed between uh, the CF ones and this is on the CF ones, you know, a lot of the same profiles are there, but we raised the wheel wells and we hugged the 21 and 22 inch wheels making a much more radical uh, updated version of that uh, body line. Whereas on this car, I wanted to keep the sweep going back, but not as big as the original cars. So if you look at the back side of the van, it's yeah. completely different. So we only went halfway up as much as the CF ones for the fender line. So when you look at that car and of course that car is sitting so low, seems like every nut and bolt we put on that car dropped another yeah. half an inch, right? It's so yeah, fun to put in a trailer. Know, that, that <laughs> right. Yeah. What a nightmare. <laughs> what a nightmare. But, uh, you know, but tucking the top of a 20 inch wheel up front and a 21 in the back and that car still hovering like two inches off the ground, you know, that thing's radical. And we got full turning radius too, which is really crazy inside of that low stance and uh, tucking all that wheel. We got full that's, turning radius. That's too. wicked, dude. I love the, that wheel combo. Like I would never think to do that, which is well, probably why I haven't won a Riddler award. <laughs> no, stop. But, uh, <laughs> it's, hey, it's, it's all in the diameter. Have your people, have your people contact me. <laughs> we'll get you in that. But we'll it just works. Hands. You know, it's like, Damn, that it, it looks so sick. That it, it doesn't even look cartoonish. You know, it, it, it the proportions are so right. good. I, I really. It's uh, what it's did you a, do on the wheels? I was trying to figure it out looking at the renderings, and I I still can't wrap my head around it. So you know, actually, uh, Kevin's got it. Kevin's got it down pat. Uh, wheels for a show car, especially, have to be chromed if you're going to go for that. It just a full polished wheel just doesn't do the same thing as the crispiness is of, of a really good chrome job. Right, right. And so Ogden Chrome did a fantastic job. It's a clean blue chrome. But to do that on a three-piece wheel, you know, you have to be able to bolt it all together when it's right. done in yeah, and out yeah. of hoop in the face. And we didn't want to look at, uh, I didn't want to have the wheel look modular. So no, no hardware on the outside of the wheel. And I don't want to look at it from the backside. So I sat there and I was like, okay, we're going to have to reinvent the wheel. So what I came up with, uh, working with Sean over at <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, he got the t-shirt too. Uh, the inner and outer yeah. hoops go back finger to, grooved. All right, go back to the uh, other picture. Of the drawing? Yeah, the rendering the top of right. The, yeah, the wheels. Scroll through that. There's a picture of the rendering of exploded in there. Yeah, and it is just so cool Maybe to not. be able no. to. Have, uh, we'll bounce back in there in a second. You'll see it, but it was somewhere we just had it up. Yeah, it was. It was. So the wheel basically is bolted into the perimeter of the face through the finger grooved inner oh, and outer right. hoops, and then there's a band basically that, that, that seals it up. Yeah, up, helps seal it, and that's where you put the glue. So basically, the hardware is all inside the tire. Yeah. How was hmm. that dragging the bead over that? Or was anybody screaming? No, you know, actually, we didn't have a problem. We were, I actually, we were really worried about it because the the plater took. A, well, we were a little behind the, the curve, like everything, you know, just like car guys do. And, the, and we were last minute, and we had we sealed them all up, and I was really worried about it. And we only had one that we had to reseal. We got three out of four. Yeah. We got three out of four money the first time, right there. yeah. And there's so there's the wheel. So yeah, all the hardware is inside that, like I said, inside where the tire goes, and it just mm -hmm. makes it, it creates a way clean look, and you're able to chrome plated that's the most important thing yeah and if you're really paying attention to the wheels too so we went further than just that so it's a monologue um which has a beautiful little uh uh you know the the, the nut on there we've got a little tool that goes into there it's all mono is french for one yeah. if you didn't know bonjour no uh, <laughs> also the will would break out we actually took that off of the plate and actually took all of the the dimensions of that we actually continued the same design element off of the hub of the wheel off the face and carried that, that all the way through the brake rotor, uh, the hat. Yeah, so the so like Super. the design in the wheel runs up through the brake hat, so like it, it loops around into the brake hat. It's amazing. And then we did the we did the rotors. We had them machined out of stainless steel and polished. And then we, you know, obviously it's a show car at the moment. But then we we put some felt on the brake pads so we can get in and out of Detroit. Okay, so we were really trying to think of everything. And I think you know you want to say the the struggles of building a Riddler, at least at Kendigat Design is. Just think everyone was so excited. It was so hard to encapsulate everyone's ideas, right? Everybody wanted to do their very best on the car. And it's like, okay, we're, 
we're to this point, we got to maybe hold back on a couple of things so we can finish the car. And I think that was, that was, if, I mean, from <laughs> where, a manager, you, hold from, back from, you know, from a manager's, oh, so originally just to, to, we were going to do perimeter brakes in the wheels. Like perimeter brakes would have been sick. It, yeah. It, it's a cool look. We got to the point where like, wow. We're working with Cessna we're, trying to get like we're a caliper. Trying, yeah. And I'm like, this is just going to turn into a fucking nightmare. I was like, I think we're done. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and go with regular brakes. There's nothing wrong with Will Woods. It's Let's not like they it. could give you a bigger Riddler trophy. Already, <laughs> like, there's only one size. That's, right. so. That's true. <laughs> Have you guys created like a portal or time machine to just come up with the time to do all this shit. I mean, yeah, how the fuck? just every individual thing, like a TV show would shut down most shops. Building a production car would shut down all shops and be a whole separate shop. Then you guys show up to SEMA with eight, nine, 14 new cars <laughs> every year. That would shut down any shop. And there's a Riddler car just kind of lurking in the background that, that we got to get done. Everybody, every shop in the country, that's their entire. I think that Utah's years. got looser drug laws. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah, Sleep it's, it's the pussies. fucking wild west out there, dude. You get as many wives as you want, just yeah. fucking cranking. I bet you you can still buy old school speed out there, like trucker yeah. speed <laughs> in the yellow yeah, hills. <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> No, uh, you know what? It's actually really cool. So, you know, we've been working with Fisher Productions for 11 years plus now, and uh, we've actually uh, had a really great relationship with them because they are literally a fly on the wall. Uh, They do not tell us what to do, how to do it, when to do it, who to do it for. Um, They're literally just there to capture what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll make up the scenes as needed. So we'll go over to my other building so it doesn't interrupt the production when we're doing like the little interviews where we're talking about what we're building. So it just really doesn't take away from the guys. Um, and uh, to, I'll let the cat out of the bag. On, I'm, I'm, since you're seven guys are down in Australia that listen to this anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we filmed uh, eight hour episodes uh, on the Riddler build. Oh, so shit. we'll get to see that. Uh, before yeah, so they, wow. they were recording it the whole time. Cool. So they just held that they held all the footage, which is going to be really cool. I told them you, you own the car at whatever point you let the cat out of the bag early. So don't <laughs> and, do it. And like I said, and to let the other cat out of the bag, really you have eight wives and 26 kids. <laughs> They're that pretty much right? take care of all of the small things in the shop. Right. right. They got those little details. They're just <laughs> such great yeah. kids. You imported them then. Huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. well, touching on that about the team specifically on this build, right? So there's the, there's the idea creation process. There's the selling and, and working and the courting and the making sure that the customer in the shop and you and all that is the right fit, right? So you go through those hurdles, right? So now it's the time, like, we're, we're doing this, right? But you also know, probably didn't think it was going to be five years, probably thought it was going to be about two and a half, three years, right? COVID hit and all this kind of stuff. But you're creating that team. You've also got other builds. You've also got the dynamics of keeping other sh- employees happy that may or may not be working on this or the team and stuff like that. What is that dynamic like for you guys? Is it team specific on this or it's always guys that you know that will work on that, keeping them quiet, keeping them from taking pictures, keeping, I'm sure there's probably been guys in that time that have you come and gone that worked on it and not working on it there. There's a lot to unpack there in that particular thing, employee team for that build. It wasn't, there was a lot of paperwork signed. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, uh, everybody that uh, works for us had to have a, uh, NDA. And, uh, so it was very important to make sure that nobody was taking pictures and showing anybody on the side or whatever. Most everybody that's at my shop right now has had their hands on that car, which is really quite rewarding for all of us. You know, to, to all of us, it took all of us to do it. It wasn't just, you know, two or three guys and whatever. I mean, I have a former employee that was a big part of that still. He's got his own business and, and uh, he did a wonderful job on the fabrication parts uh, that he was involved in. And, but everybody had a hand in the car. You know, it was, uh, I think it was really important to make sure that everybody felt like they had a, a big chunk of the build and, and part of the dream. And it was something that we wanted to do for, you know, oh, for the entire ever. time I've been in my, in, in business, you know. We, I mean, and kind of back to that whole thing. Cause I, I remember when Dave came back from Pittsburgh and he goes, Hey, so I met a client. He wants to build a Riddler car. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. I say, and he's like, well, what are you thinking? And I was like, well, what are you thinking? And I think it was a couple of days. We went back and forth. We were like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to build for the Riddler. Like we had no clue in the beginning and I know it was kind of back and forth. And we were talking CF one and I was like, yeah, we can't make it to composite it. Ha- I mean, we're going to go down that road. It's gotta be an, um, an alloy of some kind. And, and then it just kind of involved into that something different. So well, I didn't want to take, I mean, the CF ones have been a huge success for my company. 
And I didn't want to just take one of those, paint it a different color, and put a little right. more chrome on it and see, yeah, see if I can throw work. it at the wall and see if it sticks. I didn't want to do something different. But because of our success with the CF1s, I think it, uh, I think a lot of people actually, when they first seen the car, like, was that, is that one of the new body styles? What number is this car? And it's like, no, this yep. is all, you know, and of course you start explaining it and then they start watching the, uh, the, the screens that we have next to the display and they're like, shit. Wow. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, the, the car is literally out of the box. There is one component that I can even think of that is literally not touched, just taken out of the box and put in the car. It's under the dash and it's the Haltech computer. <laughs> Everything yeah. else has been modified. Everything else has been hand built. Nothing is off of a CF1. I mean, even the headlight rings, I got cast ones that we make all the time. Those are billet, uh, the bumperettes, everything is done one off for that car. So you did like the exact wrong thing basically, because you probably started, you yeah. sure you had the <laughs> idea. <Perfect> storm. <laughs> I know yeah. where you're going. <laughs> that you're like, you know what? This is such a man. These custom cars are a fucking nightmare. Like let's build, we sh- we need to build something that's the same every time so we can repeat it. And then comes the CF one. And you're probably realizing like right about the time that that was like probably flowing like these parts i mean they just go on it's the same what color do you want it what color interior and then boom you're like let's do one of these that's like (laughs) a little bit different but uses none of the parts like yeah those headlight rings i mean they're cool we've got a whole like shelf of them but fuck that like i want to i want it to like stretch back a little bit be a quarter inch thinner (laughs) that's exactly right i didn't want to glue i didn't want to glue the headlight ring uh to the lens on this car i wanted to be able to put it together so we had perfect fit all the way across the board. Even the lens is based on what looks like the CF1. It's different. And that actually has uh, less of the, what looks like the basket yeah. would be over the headlight. It's uh, milled into the inside of the lens. Uh, you're like by a half inch. You're, yeah. you're, com- yeah. you're 100% right. But it is a half inch. No, it's, you're the exact it's, fucking it's same. Literal. So I'm not, yeah, that's why I know. <laughs> that's why. That's why I know what they did. I'm like, I'm not saying that. Well, here, I'm thinking that. I do it any different. <laughs> I'm thinking they should have done that. One, the Riddler, and then, Repop that one a hundred times as the CF one and been like, oh, fuck so, yeah, yeah, we so did. we did it backwards. Who said I didn't? Who says I'm not? <laughs> <laughs> I know they'll sell. One. I know they'll sell. Number one's already sold. So if I did those out yeah. of carbon fiber, I wouldn't do the same windshield Lots out of respect to the to the general, uh, you know, the gentleman that I built the car for. I don't want to go. Hey, you got the first one, uh, the most expensive one. And everybody else is just buy them for like a fraction of that. No. Ooh, and we're gonna have to so, repaint it because we pulled the mold off. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that mold release would have worked a lot better. I'm sorry. What color do you want it? But uh, no, I actually have a another body style. It's uh, going to be available uh, probably in the next couple of years, maybe less. It depends. We got to really get back. Or to maybe, more. maybe more. Maybe more. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a no, uh, nomad wagon as well. Uh, so we have the speedsters. Right we have the cabriolets now. Um, it's funny as a lot of guys are actually changing their orders that they'd ordered speedsters once they seen the cabriolet come out uh, last SEMA. They're like, hey, can I, can I, I change mine I, to a, I want a speedster? Top? I want to put my name Dude, I long, want one too. I, no, I agree with so you. We, we can work out some chassis. Yeah, yeah, stuff. totally. Yeah. And take a shit. This is like a year's chassis production, probably. <laughs> Get yourself we just said we'd work it out. It's not a big deal. Yeah, we don't, we don't got to talk numbers right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tax write off. They write it off. Right. Yeah, I've, had a, I've had a chassis on order for a couple of years now with you guys. Can I just change it to, to yep. whatever I want yeah. since yep. I'm yep. already online? Cool. Absolutely. Yep. Man, we can work that out. Yeah, it's a sick car, man. It, it's a likable car. I, w- I would like to have one. I mean, I'd love to have one. It's just like something that you just you feel like if you rolled up to dinner in that thing, like a nice dinner. Fuck, you just look so badass. Mm-hmm. And it's so elegant, you know? Thank you. Fucking cars are beautiful. You know, I'm having a lot of fun with them, actually. We're doing one right now, number 15. Uh, is going to be British Racing Green with a couple of small hoops on the back. Leather straps uh, on the hood. Nice. Spokes. That's, now you're It's yeah, cool. Talking. And then I'm doing some really cool vintage-styled, uh, looks like a polished uh, walnut shell, the, the English leather look yeah. with a diamond tuck uh, pattern. And I'm actually hand-painting. Uh, Burlwood on the dash and the inserts in the doors. Yeah. It's gonna be badass. I know I'm super. I was I'm kind of disappointed, honestly, because you're having so much fun with this. Because I truly thought, you know, and as we started building more and more of these cars, they're obviously getting easier and easier to build for the shop. And I knew that your job was gonna get harder because you were like, hey, no two are gonna be the same. You know, we can use the same color, but it won't have the same interior color. And I thought it would really put some pressure on Dave, but. He nope, is just digging what? in and having, he's have he is pig and shit. Like he just loves it. He is. Oh, let's do this. Let's we do this. And I'm just like, I'm just like, geez, like you're not stumped. You can't yeah, be stumped. I'm not stumped. I'm, I'm having so much fun. I just uh, finished up the designs for number 16 and it is a light uh, mint color. Oh, and I really like that one leather. too. 
with black wheels, black dash, and black, the top. black top is badass. I mean, yeah. It's going to be really cool. I'm really, it's be cool. really excited. And that's our first car going to Canada. That's what I'm saying is that these designs are getting, I mean, these color combinations are getting better. And I was like, gosh, I thought this was going to be like, you, I thought you were going to start sweating here. Come 17 cars. You're like, you're well, what color do I want to do now? Like, but no, you're nailing it. When are we going to get into your like uh, mini truck OBS background? Have some crazy splash graphics and stuff. Gosh, I hope they, like, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Graphic, We're going to talk right? about that. I want you to do, <laughs> I want you to do one with your take, the CF one, and your take on like the interpret your interpretation of like that commercial fuely, like stripped down kind of look. Imagine like a dark blue, like steely kind of look and something like that. But those shapes and then like a modern fuel kind of thing, that thing would be That'd fucking be cool. cool. Yeah. Dude, you can get, get one. Then you could just yeah, tell them to I, do it however you I want. Just, <laughs> I'll trade you guys. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get one for the roadster shop. I'll trade you for some chassis. We'll, we'll, I'm, I'm in. We need a shitload yeah. of chassis for yeah. that. Yeah, 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 I think I, I fell in love with that blue one with the gold wheels. That was at SEMA. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah number yeah, seven. Was, yeah. That's a uh, Rick, so uh, Rick message from deadliest catch. Really? really? Yeah, and that was uh, actually the first one we brought the eight stack through the hood. Um, it's funny is actually I'm right on that same page, Phil. I uh, I'm doing a '63 Beetle convertible for myself right now, and I'm doing it that exact same Baltic Sea blue that that I developed as part of my paint line. Same gold wheels on some Porsche Fuchs, 17s and 15s. Got you, the car slammed right, on the ground. Nice. You can say Fuchs on here. You can, you're doing yeah. gold wheels on that? Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah, Matt Gold with the and the I've got a 2276 going to that. This thing's gonna. I want to put him in the passenger seat because yeah. he hates Volkswagens. I don't hate. No, 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 let's try to set the record he straight. Like I don't hate Volkswagens. They just don't do a lot for me. Yeah, this one's badass. Don't surprise me. I'm when surprised you, when I dump the clutch and ride a wheelie. You're gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you work through all of this. Obviously, we know when it gets to paint and body, it just sails through because everything fits exactly like it did right. in fab. Always. You, know, you spray it. So that's you know, a couple weeks. Good, good to go. Yeah, yeah I mean, not a big stage. deal. Yeah, chrome it's bolts like, right on. Dip it. You know, good chrome. Throws right on there. Nothing. No. So no you, waiting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely Everything's not. Everything's always right. wrapped. Absolutely time. not. And I think I think one of the biggest challenges with this car is just like just like just you said, everything grows. And if you ever get a chance to see the car in person, you can see that the chrome lines up with the body and the windows line up with the body. So it's like one plane. Everything lines up on the same plane. It comes right across, and it's, it's super smooth. easy to do. We <laughs> probably sent those that chrome surround stuff back to the chrome shop. 40 times Dude, in, in copper. Bitch. So we were actually doing body work and sanding copper all at the same time. We had uh, throwaway glass. So yeah. the, 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 there's so many really trick pieces with that car. There's an inner and outer frame for both the rear glass and the windshield. And it's got a wedge inside the polycarbonate windshields from shields uh, is 45, basically a bevel that fits between the two pieces. And then a piece of eighth inch uh, aquarium tubing to create the seal is in the very wedge in the very, deepest part of that wedge so when you put it all together it squeezes it down and now when you rub your hand across the paint to chrome to glass it's all just flowing there's no there's That's no steps sick. there's no changes in elevation and it was way and it was like you said it was way easy when you painted Super everything and it easy. slipped it right stuck. together i would it do is. it every time <laughs> <laughs> Should all, are all the listeners encouraged to try that? Yeah, I oh, definitely. Yeah. I give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and knock give that, that a shot. Knock on that fucker too, because yeah. I don't believe it's aluminum. It might be fiberglass. You know? <laughs> right in the middle of the door yeah, skin. Find the, flat, right, right. the flattest panel and give it a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so oh, you show up. You show up to Detroit. Obviously, you know you have no idea what to expect. There could have been another shop or another two shops that kept the same five year secret. Right, and bring in your fucking A game. You have no we were, idea. We were certainly hoping so. Right, and so you see, you see what's there. You doing? You made a comment at the very beginning, and it stuck with me. You said we always want to be treated and and, and judged again, treated like normal guys. Yeah, right? totally. How much do you ever think about that when you show up at a show, especially something like this or any other shows, and worry about being treated because of the TV show, treated differently, or somebody saying they like something? Thing? Does that go through your head? You made the comment. I want to be. I want to be treat. I want to be judged like everybody else. Yeah, totally. I mean, you, I think I always do. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be good in the industry because we have a television show. I want to be good in the industry because we built good cars. Yeah, we don't want to you know? win. Because I don't. Yeah, I don't want to win television. the Riddler because we're on television. I want to win the Riddler because we built a good car. Yeah, just like everybody else that shows up at the Riddler. And really, I mean, we 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 did consider and and worry a little bit about that. Well, we're going to show up and we're going to have the, all the haters are going to come out of the woodwork. And it's like, you know what? If you're not here, you probably won't see it uh, until you see the car in person. Yeah. But I will tell you this, um, you know, uh, from the outside, if I wasn't who I am and, and working with the people I do, if I was on the outside looking in, 
and I had any kind of inclination, and, you know, if I was inclined to say that they were only winning because who they are, look at the fucking car. Yeah. There's yeah, not, so there's was... not a piece of hardware on that car. That's right. not custom built stainless, triple square and EDM laser etched inside. Yeah, all the, Evo. all of, all of the hardware is triple square because we don't have the time to line everything up. So if we figured, figured we'd, if we did 12 points, it would all just look like it was lined up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all flush. I mean, even down, to the, the, even down to the number four uh, hardware holding the C-Tech in the tail light on the passenger side. It is triple square, full polished with EDM laser etch inside. Well, and like I said, and kind of back to your point too. So I showed up in Detroit on Wednesday and I'm just following the lines and I go around the post office. And I'm, I sit outside for three hours trying to get we into Detroit and it's movie. all good. It's all good. I just want to be, I'm not here to be, Hey, I'm Kevin from can dig it. And I want to get to the front of the line. Yeah. Absolutely not. And we waited our turn and we got inside and he's like, gosh, we were looking for you. You know, we didn't see any logos. We just took the, just a yep. dually and a regular trailer, no logos on it. And I was like, look, I'm just, I just want to be treated like everybody else. I don't want to be to the front of the line, judge the car. Like it's just the car, you know, and I want to win because it's a good car. Not because we're on television. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody could possibly argue that. I mean, that is the hands down uh, winner. Wouldn't matter whose name was on it. That thing was just like Josh said, you know, you always, when the right car is there, you know. I mean, sometimes there's some competition and you're like, eh, eh, and could go this like way, an, could go there up. might be an upset. That was one. Mm. I mean, I was like casually flipping through something. Like, That's the fucking winner. And you just keep like I don't even know what else was there. I'm like, that will definitely win. This motherfucker's gonna win a Riddler award. Damn. Well, see, and, that, and, that, and that's and that's the fun, and that's a, the craziest part to me is because we I help put these cars together and I kind of have the final check on all the stuff and I know where every problem is. I know where everything is. And I'm looking at these other cars and obviously I'm not in those. And I'm just like, maybe they have less problems in mine, <sighs> you know. And so I'm still questioning the whole time because that's just me. Yep. Yeah. I'm just questioning. That's where you got to be. One, 100%. It's just like, okay, well, I haven't, you know, I didn't build their car, but it looks really good. Like, but I'm not in on the details. So do they have less mistakes than I do? Cause I know where every little thing that we could have maybe done a little bit better or something that didn't quite fit good. You know, the car is amazing overall, but it's just like, ah, so all the way up till Sunday, I'm just like sweating it. Yeah. I was, I was like serious sweating it. Cause you just never know. It's you know what? I, I, I was fucking worried dude i saw it was a video that popped up you were in it, it was something on youtube and you guys were like unloading it and it looked like it was your typical thing that it's like that's that's an important thing that's happening and everybody should just stay the fuck away there's oh, too no. many yeah. people oh, no, no, there no. was like there's like a like hundred people waiting people, for us to get like, us like there's like dudes help random dudes helping like push it I'll yeah it. yeah and I'll I'm like, yeah and the front of that fucker, I'm, I'm watching. Oh, it. yeah. That's oh. like that on the trailer. I've been in that position so many times. Oh. Where you're, and like everybody <laughs> wants to jump in right then and there. And you're just. How about everybody just go get a beer? Yeah. Leave, leave me alone for 10 minutes. That right. On me. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, also, you talk about the amount of pressure that we have building, you know, that car and getting it there. And I mean, it's, it's winter. We're coming from Utah. Right. Anything could happen. We could have a storm and whatever. He could be stuck for two days in Wyoming and not make the show. And so we're there, we get the car and the, of course we pull up and we get the display out and we're kind of just picking our moment, whatever. And then he finally opens the back of the truck or the trailer and there's like 30, 40 people. And then you start to coagulate and some guy walks up, is this the Corvette? Is the Corvette in that trailer? How the hell would you know what's in the trailer? Right? So a little bit of word got out here and there or whatever. We pull it out of there and we come from 4,700 feet. Car's tuned at 4,700 feet. It had, does have a self-learning yeah, system for the fuel feet. injection. It ain't going to just fire up no, it, it real was quick not, and it just was run all pretty and everything. It was, it not, was not, not having fun. So then all of a sudden. It's so a cool of, to do with a bunch of people yeah. watching. <laughs> yeah. It's not happy, bro. It's like trying to. Yeah. Pee. And then so somebody's like, like, yeah. so everybody's putting videos out there. The car wouldn't start and stay running. So Someone's like, to pump, pump it. Pump it, backward. man. Pump it. I know. It's like. Hold it to the floor. Yes. Yeah. So. Everyone's a professional at that moment in time. I know exactly what to do. I was one of them V12s. Yeah. 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 I got one just like it out in the park. I'm not sure you do. So. So there was a lot of pressure. And of course we're sitting there kind of sweating bullets because you do have to pull it forward, backward, turn left, right. And it has to be able to stop. And so we're trying to do that. And, and the judges are standing there. They're being very patient while we're trying to start the car. And then of course your roads out here on the way to Chicago. Uh, from, uh, yeah. So Illinois is not oh, super, super kind nice. to show cars. Uh, that car's, I mean, do you airbag it? Do you airbag it when you trap, when you move? Well, it? and that's the problem no. is that there was no place to put anything underneath it. Uh, Period. Like, there's no frame that's, rails. There's no place to throw an airbag under. Because when yes. you open the door to the trailer, you don't know what surprise. Yeah. What's in store. Glove box is sitting on the passenger floor. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see the the rear case, the whole lid was off. Yeah, the rear luggage piece was just a, a snug fit. Yeah, it's sitting halfway into it. Um, let's see here. Passenger door door pin came out and was stuck in the latch still. The door, luckily, because we had uh, a car the cover California on car it. cover on it, held the door shut. Yeah, good. That's a good plug for yeah. California car cover. Right yeah, there. keep Thank your you door much. shut. Throw keep a car door cover shut on there. The car yeah. cover. <laughs> California car cover. Coming near you. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. we we really did luck out, and of course we had a we we I think we had like a dozen of our guys go out there, and we brought uh, yeah Will, we had a lot of the crew. Uh, out. Javier that's been with us forever. He's our MVP on on this build for sure at the end because everybody kept scratching the damn car. It's like okay. He's gonna have to go home and get some sleep this week. Stop scratching the damn. Oh well, yeah, this Be guy careful. was. This guy had it dialed like he could touch this color up, and you had no idea. And I'm like, uh, you, uh, you have the magic badass. fingers. <laughs> like you are the man MVP of the Riddler build. All period. Day. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of MVPs, MVPs, but he certainly stood out I at mean, the end. One hundred percent. He's been with us for a very long time, and we love him because if he hadn't have been there. <laughs> Touch and stuff. No. Up. We were like, oh yeah, is yeah, that a yeah. touch up? Yeah, that's, that's a red sharpie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's <laughs> totally a red sharpie. Some lipstick, so it'll right. fill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we uh we got there though, and once the once the car got out, we got we we passed off on our uh our on our point check to make sure that the car ran and everything. We was trying to do it as quick as possible because you don't want to you know yellow out the headers. Yeah. And so we were we're not gonna run any longer. We need to. And uh, finally, we got all that stuff done. We got checked off, which was great. We got it up on the lift, and then I really started taking in awesome you know the display with the car and how it just uh, sat on there and i'm like going oh my god we actually saw well here. and that was the crazy part about it is and i don't know if you realize this dave that was the first time the car had ever run with its exhaust and headers so we started the car and i think there's a picture I saw that yeah like so we built yeah we built, built like headers, these yep. big zoomy headers up over the fender so we could run the car and make sure everything was working return without yep. blowing up uh, the stainless headers like we really took it serious the, the exhaust was in the car it was in the car we just had the headers out of it we were able to start it and make sure everything worked and then we put the headers in and we didn't start it we pushed it in the trailer so we got to detroit and it wasn't happy and i'm just like well it ran fine the last time <laughs> like yeah. i don't know what it was. <laughs> well it's trying to learn a thousand feet yep. rather right. than 4700 feet right. so right. i mean it's like and anybody that's talking a bunch of smack it's like just the show me what off. you got. Well, I mean, yeah. what did you build to bring here? Did you bring yeah, something? Like a okay, trailer well, queen? Like, exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah, we I like to a, drive my shit. We did build a trailer queen. That was kind of the idea, so yeah. we can come here and win. You know, we're not autocrossing this fucking We thing. brought the trailer because we plan on taking the trailer, the trophy home, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we left a little room that. in there. Yeah. Wouldn't well, have had room if we drove. <laughs> well, and the nice thing, and then like I said, and I, and I told Dave this, too, it's like, it is what it is, and if anybody doesn't have these kind of struggles building this kind of car, I feel like they're lying. Yeah. I yes. mean, we, we loaded this thing in it. The whole, piece. the whole thing was an experiment. You're going to have these kind of things. Uh, in a perfect world, we would have hit this thing first time, but yeah. it's a car. Like, it's going to surprise you. We pushed, it's a car that didn't exist. Well, 100%. Right. But not a single if you look piece in the, Yeah, exactly. If you look in the back of when we have the front clip and the rear clip still being fabricated, if you look in the background, there's four by 10 sheets of aluminum sitting there. That's the rest of the car. Yeah, that's it's still sitting there flat up against crazy, the, up against the wall and just, you know, pull another sheet fucking off. Fucking United Airlines can't keep the fucking tires on or the doors <laughs> closed on them. And they build a shit ton of those. <laughs> they should put California car covers on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> Wasn't that you? You were just talking about that the other day about fucking parts. I was talking oh, about you. It. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm at the gym again. this morning. I'm, I'm looking at fucking wheels are falling off of some plane. Yeah, the, like, the taking off from San Francisco, <clears throat> United Airlines, it gets. Did you see the damage to the cars? No. It loses a oh, wheel. Oh, shit. <laughs> Those are heavy, too. That's it a- weighs 265 pounds, just the tire, not including the wheel. They said it weighs 400 pounds. It came down on a Corolla and a Tesla in the parking lot. <laughs> it's oh. like a fucking IED <laughs> went off. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking gone. Just flattened. That happened, th- that happened yesterday late. It was on the news this morning. And then this afternoon, another United <laughs> Airlines takes the turn wide in, like, Houston or whatever and runs the fucking front end off in the grass and buries it. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're it's batting a thousand. Shit. They're like, batting a thousand. Bad. Is that a bad week? Hey, if anybody thinks they had a bad week, yeah. you don't want to be united this That's week. That's right. Damn. So get yourself uh, a 
Delta Pass? Yes. <laughs> and a California well, so Airlines. I say all that. So if a customer <laughs> complains a about a 67 <laughs> Chevelle, like a uh, glove box squeaking a little bit, like, oh, we tried. We yeah, tried yeah, really exactly. hard. <laughs> just chill out. <laughs> the tire's still on it. The fucking wheels. The door didn't blow off at 30,000 feet. And it normally doesn't start squeaking until like 3,500 miles, right? Yeah. Fuck. Dude, you're talking about the aluminum. That's what keeps, you know, I'm thinking about shaping that thing, right? Metal work is what intrigues me the most. How did you guys approach that? I mean, was that just, that was that dude's in-house that you guys just got after it? Shaped yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, Jordan Brown that uh, worked for us forever, uh, he started his own deal. He's just a one-man show, just doing some some uh, cool little stuff. And uh, I hit him up. I was like, because he's a genius with metal. And my guys, uh, you know, Eric there, Will, I mean, we've got a whole bunch of guys that are just fantastic doing that stuff. But we had other cars and other projects and that. And sure. this was a perfect project for him to do. Uh, he, he was making uh, uh, patterns. Uh, off of our plug car that we actually just mocked up, did okay. foam scale, a uh, little bit of fiberglass, and uh, started pulling tape patterns off of this thing, and went home and started whittling it up, and then back in the shop, and he's whittling there and just setting it on the plug car. It was just really a, a cool process to watch how yeah, it was like through this it was really just skill. one piece yeah. at a time. I mean, it was a fender one day, you know, and he would slowly start at the back of a fender and start welding the thing together. Next thing you know, you had a front end, and then we're building from off from there, and then you had a door jam. And the really cool thing about it is, is that when we were in the building process is, is the floor and the structure was all one. And then he kind of built the skin of the body as a, another piece. So when they, we waited till the very end to attach them. So all the hammer and dolling could be accessed. Cause once it went on, it became one and you couldn't reach anything. So all of the, the, the seam was actually welded right underneath the rocker kind of that's that would be the achilles heel because you couldn't hammer and dolly yeah. that after yeah. so well the wheel wells were actually the most trick piece because he had to do fashion the outside body and the underside body and then to put those together with the superstructure inside basically it's a monocoque with a three eighths inch thick aluminum that's that major piece that went between the outer skin and the inner sure. um and what was cool is he took one inch round solid aluminum stock and that is the wheel lip because you can't get in there hammer and dolly the backside because yeah, once the wheel it's together coming around to the skin, there's just yeah. nowhere to get in there and work that. So doing that thicker aluminum, it was able to fashion that and basically just TIG weld it and metal finish it and we're done. What, what's the name of that color? Uh, that is one of my modern classic. That's infrared. It's a base coat. clear. When coat. are you going to name a color after Kevin? He's, it's due for he's got to have a color named after wait, him. Wait, what should we name it? Dogwood. Ooh, I like that. That dogwood, though. I like that. Remember, we did dogwood on your dually. Yeah, I did, but yeah. that was that was a different paint brand, and that was a different color. So maybe we should just do that. Yeah, we should. We what did you say? Dogwood. We should. I yeah. like that. Yeah. It's on. It's on record. It's on record. Yeah, dogwood. Hey, dogwood. if you need that edited out, you could call them later. Dogwood, well, I just dogwood need to work green. on trademarking. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we talked about car. We talked about getting there. Uh, <laughs> talked about all the people watching, right? And you're in you're in the element. It's a, it's one of the probably the most stressful times. This is the culmination of a lot of hard work. You have no idea what you're gonna get. You think people are there, but you guys are professionals, right? You're always on, right? You're you you've got an image to uphold. You got to stuff. Has there ever been a time where somebody's caught you slipping? When have you ever been off? And you look back at that and man. I, like, and they caught me. Like, they saw me pissed off. They saw me flipping. Like, they like saw me walk, like, walked around the back of the car and just like. Nobody's really. Nobody's looking. And just, <laughs> there's, a, there's a fan there. Yeah, there's a well, that was a good one. Oh, I didn't even know anybody was back here. Oh, my God. There has to be a time, man. You can't be perfect 100% of the time. I mean, we've told some people off for sure. I feel like, you know. In the in the scheme of things, I can picture times where like people were just very not on their game or not sharp, and you're just trying to get something like. And I don't, I don't, I can't remember a specific, but I'm there's times. I don't know. I mean, we we could probably get a couple more drinks this, and I'd, I'd, <laughs> you I'd start, start rattling them off, rattling off like all oh, this. So we were in uh, Detroit. We're at the host hotel the other night. I know, right? There you go. We're at the host hotel, and we're in the bar, we're just having a great time. It was my wife's charity birthday. Or beer. Uh, just a little bit of that would be just fine. And uh, this guy, I, I'm up there settling out the, the bill and stuff, and, and uh, he comes up. Now, Chip Foose is actually a very, very great guy. He's a very uh, warm individual. I've known him for years. He's a great guy. Um, and this guy walks up, and he says, oh, that car you guys built there, no, that's, that's, that's going to win. That's going to win, and you should be really proud of that. He says, it's, a, it's good for you guys that uh, Chip wasn't here this year. And I'm like, 
well, what makes him just automatically the winner if he shows up? And I'm like, I said, I, I don't disagree with you. He builds a wonderful car. I mean, he's obviously no swap, but he's got the more Riddlers than anybody, right? Uh, but to to say that I was lucky that he didn't show up, it's like, well, what would he be bringing to to, to beat that? So yeah, I, that's a, that's a, I that's wanted a, good competition. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a shitty thing. It was a shitty yeah, thing. I, I was so pissed off when, yeah. I, when he said that. I, I didn't say anything to him. I just looked at him like, yeah, good for me. I said, but every dog has its day. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to go to the dive bar with the production guys. <laughs> yeah, you're all, I'm out of here. <laughs> and then I'm I was like, here. you know what? I'm actually tired. I'm just going to go to bed before I beat this guy up. <laughs> so <laughs> The celebrity thing, I feel like, opens you up <clears throat> to that. Because if it was just a normal person, I don't think people have Nobody like, that the, aud- the audacity <laughs> to say that, right. you know? But you look at it with, like, like the fucking Jordan-LeBron debate and all, like, always going. You're like, dude, you never say such terrible things like that to just some normal dude that's not like basketball, exactly, exactly. but just because it is like right. the greatest basketball player in the world. So you're like, yeah, fuck that dude. He it sucks. <laughs> he looks <laughs> stupid as fuck. Like if you're like, not first, you're last as far as I'm right. concerned. Yeah. Celebrity status like instantly puts you at a place like you're, you're waiting to hear your fan's opinion, no matter how horrible it is. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Just did. He does a podcast. It's not for me. Awesome. Uh, he does not for me. I don't. I didn't really like it, but <laughs> he does. He just he, he did a thing like they've got a place in the Keys, so he's down there with his family, and like it's a condo thing, whatever. They're down with a bunch of friends, and another guy's there. They get in the hot tub. There's like like ten of them, whatever. This guy comes up. He's had a few too many, whatever. He's like, oh, Dale Junior. Hey man, how's it going? And, you know, love watching you. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson sure did win a lot more fucking times than you. And he's, wow. he's like, that's the first thing he says, whatever. And he's like, instantly, I'm like, that fucking hurt my feelings. Are you <laughs> fucking asshole. And we're going to hang out the rest of the night. And you're sitting at the, like, it just yeah. opens you up. Like you, like, like you have no feelings. They can say yeah. whatever oh, the yeah. fuck they've been thinking. They're forever. used, they're, they're so used to, they know you because they've been watching yeah. you for years Got and years and years. Right. And I head. have people walk up, man, you're so talented, Dave. Why do you put up with that fucking guy? And I'm like. It's we my wonder best that friend, you prick. We, we wonder that too, though. Yeah. Right? That's, that's exactly. I'm right here. I'm right here, you right motherfucker. Right, the end of oh, the interview. Shit. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, hey, you. I'm not just a. I'm not the a cover of a magazine. You're walking right past. Right. I'm, I'm like I'm right dude. here. You're the talking human. to me. I'm a normal person. I have feelings. I I care about my friends and I care about my 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 uh, reputation. So just short of telling you to go fuck yourself because you just told me my my best friend's a dick. Yep. It's like stop watching TV. If you don't like what you're watching, don't watch yeah, it. There's so much stuff on TV. Like, I there's watch- so <laughs> much. I mean, keeping up with the Kardashian to be right up right. the rally, bro. Why don't you go watch that shit? Yeah. Well, and I think about it, and I think that D- Detroit. Well, there was a huge theme in Detroit when we were setting the car up. Well, and we were doing all this work. You know, we had a good solid day and just doing making sure it was perfect. And I got this like back to back, like three or four times. Oh, it's nice to see you finally working. And I'm just like. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> I'm going to strangle these yeah. people, dude. I mean, and it was I huge. It was, it was like home. back to back to back in Detroit. And I'm you don't just like, know me like that. Yeah. I'm you like, don't you don't know me. But, <laughs> but, but again, it's like I said, you can't get caught up. People have a perception of you and it is what it is. And right. I just move on. It is what it is. It, it's a double-edged sword because that is to your talent. You've made them feel welcoming enough, right? To where they think they can come up and bust balls like that. Right, right, right. But from your end, you're like... I'm going to strangle you, you, bro. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to my friends talk to yeah, me right. like that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know you. And you're uh, not my friend. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, on the flip side of that, I don't know if you guys saw any of the social media, like, comments and everything about the car from, like, legit people in our industry, but, like, I was pretty blown away that everybody was just, this has legitimized the Riddler again. This is the car, hands down. Great to see this thing back to where it's at. This falls in line with, Andy's 40 and Troy's 36 and it's one of the one top of the, one three of the or four cars ever built. So I think it was kind of like the real recognized real thing. And everybody who's built cars just was absolutely blown away with it. So wow, that's super, you that's, guys have seen that's that. super it's been honoring and humbling. We did see sure. that uh, uh, Bobby Alloway had sent me a congrats. I had <clears> Michael Anthony from Van Halen sent me a congrats. Chip had popped by and looked oh, dude, at the car. Famous. and you know just, all kinds of people. No, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> what's funny, uh, I'll tell you a funny little story. So uh, Michael Anthony uh, apparently knows my wife, Charity, much better than he knows me. Yeah, he does. He's always, I wouldn't brag about that. Hey, hey, you shut your mouth, man. She's a nice lady. But uh, no, she's always partying with him over at uh, at the bar, the host bar at uh, the host hotel in uh, Pomona. Okay. When we're cleaning, we're tearing all the cars down and taking all the displays. She's over there partying with Michael Anthony and hanging out with all of her friends. And we're over there working our asses off. But so I got to anyway, get he, on that schedule. Yeah, he's, yeah. I know. Right. 
I don't no, work anyways. Just, what, does it doesn't matter. Just, <laughs> it was very flattering to have all of our friends. I mean, I don't know. Kevin had a couple hundred. I had a couple hundred texts just from oh, it was from people it that was... knew us and was congratulated just watching what was going on. People that I'd known that actually never got a sneak peek of anything, which was only a few. No, I'm kidding you. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, to to have them all come out of the woodwork and go, man, that is like 25 years in business to be able to do that on your 25th anniversary year it's to awesome. win the Riddler. Cool. And it I is always awesome. dreamed of it. You know, before I started my business 25 years ago, I worked at high performance coatings for eight and a half years. Yeah. And I got to know a lot of people in this. I met uh, Boyd Coddington back in the day. Chip Foose, of course, was working for Boyd at the time. Uh, Trish Panier back in the day. I mean, this is back in Bubungus, Predator, Sniper. I mean, I've, I've known Troy forever. And to just be on the in the background doing exhaust coatings and piston coatings and that kind of stuff, to move into where we're at now, self-taught, surround myself with people who know how to, you know, lick the gravy off their hot rod building plate, have a passion about the same thing that I do, um, and, and have made a career and a life out of it. It's just it's so rewarding to actually get, you know, I remember just standing back the first time I won one of the major trophies at an autorama just in Utah. I remember actually taking the first load of cars back. We had like six or seven cars, I think. Right, Dave's always Dave's always trying to take as many cars as we can anywhere. Yeah. Well, I need my <laughs> I need I need to up my chances of getting a trophy. <laughs> but uh, I just remember the first year that we actually got a Utah's finest. I remember the first load we took back to the shop, and it was dark Sunday night. And I walked over my toolbox away from everybody. I started crying. I was just I cannot believe I finally got here. You know, it was something that I always. Uh, had set goals to get good enough to win those things. And I remember going for the first many years and there was big shops in Utah and, and uh, you know, it's like, Oh, they're always going to win. You know, Lockhart's was there and uh, customs and classics. There was a uh, Dave's auto body up North. that was building stuff. I mean, there was some really you know big, big time shops. And I'm like going, God, I just want a little piece of that action. I just want to get good at what I'm doing. And so without having other shops building high-end cars, even at the local level that we were, um, then I would never have had anything to strive for to try and be better than what I was able to just turn out without watching what the other people were doing. Sure. I don't want to copy them. I don't care what they're doing. I don't look at magazines even at this day. I don't. I still don't look at magazines. I don't really try and watch what trends are. I don't care about trends. I don't think there's any magazines left. Well, even online. I just, <laughs> I really, you know, I don't, I don't look for outside influences to, to yeah. set me into the next, you know what I'm doing next. I don't, I don't that's a slope, play off slope. of trends. I don't, uh, you know, I don't do anything that's trendy. I want to do stuff that's going to be in style in 20, 30 years. Still you know, give a classic line to something and you're building something that has something that somebody's paying a lot of money for because it's in their heart. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to find the visual of that art and what they're loving to get that cash out of their pocket. No, I'm sorry. To realize their no, dream. I, hang on. I was trying to be yeah. heartfelt and I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but you're, you're, you're going through all of this pain in the ass of dealing with different personalities on your team outside of your building, you know, uh, waiting for parts, waiting for things to happen, working with clients that sometimes might shift one day. They're cool. The next day they're, you know, not. And, and so you're always trying to play the game and there's so many different things coming at you from so many different angles. If I really uh, didn't have a relaxed attitude about everything and really just take it in and don't be reactive anymore. I learned that over the last 25 years to not react immediately to when something happens. Yep. Give it a second. I haven't learned that yet. Really? You'll, you'll get there. Kid. <laughs> yeah. You follow me. You don't worry about it. You follow it, it, me. It does. It does help. We've all kind of grown into that. Like we bounce that off each other now. Like, Josh will come into my office, tell me what's going on. I, j I just need to like, I'm going to bounce this off you because I just want to like, like chill out for a minute and, and it, we'll all do the same thing. Uh, Not being like, instead of just reactions. turning around and, and reacting yeah. to what's going on. A lot of times it's better yeah. just to yeah. stand back and go, I'm going to give it another 20 minutes yeah. before I react. Yep. That's right. The email maturity. sleep on it. It's come the back the next day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's it. That, yeah. Don't hit sand a while tomorrow. It's, think about it. Yeah. It's happening more and more. I do want to, I want to ask you, I want to hear your, both your answers individually. You're, you're touching a little bit on it, but there's, the, there's gotta be those times, whether it be on the golf course, whether it be in your backyard, you're having a damn cigar, you're having a beer, you're having something, you're sitting there and you're, you're reminiscing on the week. Right. And then you start reminiscing on the things of like, holy shit, look, look at where we come. And you start thinking about those long ass fucking drives after working at the shop for three weeks. Right. And then hitting SEMA and you're looking at the clock and be like, hopefully I can make it. 
and all those times. There's all those times that you look back, whether it be one, two, or three, four times that you you remember when you were questioning the direction to go. It's like, man, is this fucking worth it? Am I am I going the right way? Am I doing this shit or whatever it is? Or just the simple time of like, I've, I'm almost out of gas. I've got to fucking keep on digging, right? What what are some of those moments when you're thinking back reminiscing like, holy fuck, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I kept fucking digging. I'm glad, look at, look at the family, look at the life, look at all the stuff that we've afforded, all the trip, everything that is great, the opportunity to work with such a great team yeah, and I build the business. A, that's a, you fucking end. Every time Dave's driving his Ferrari, well, I guarantee it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking worth it, man. <laughs> Fuck you, it Tom. I can't yeah. shoe store. I've gone a long way. <laughs> there's things, there's all, everybody's got something different, but there's those times you look back that was pivotal and you're like, yep. See, I'm glad I did that or I proved that guy wrong or I did this. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to go first because I, uh, I mean, just one thing I think that, uh, you know, Charity, um, given me the opportunity, we were married for almost six years. Uh, we had our first kid. Uh, actually, I think it was a little bit longer. I'll get the Bailey's three years older than Drew. Drew's two weeks older than my business. And to hit her up to let me quit my job, I could make more money in one rendering out of my kitchen than I was making in 60 hours a week working for high performance coatings on salary. Great opportunities. I would never trade anything for what I did uh, back in the day. But to have her trust me to finally, either that or she was just sick of me asking, to quit my job and start our business out of our garage. And she's all stop asking dave just do what you want so that's one of those moments where when she told me yes do it now i'm like going oh fuck she's actually gonna let me do this i better not fall on my face because i got a house payment two car payments and two kids no insurance now that's a pretty big uh jump right there and after f- eight and a half years i had forty eight hundred dollars in my 401k to start the business Ooh, yeah, yeah. So, it's a right now i blow pencils. that at lunch on accident <laughs> uh so no it's uh it's it's funny to look back at all of the hardships i mean we we even made mistakes uh i had a i took an investor way back about two years into business and uh boy they they stole my company and booted us out of the out of the business and basically tried to uh, turn it into a mopar restoration shop Within three days, they couldn't come within 500 yards of the shop. They turned it into a simple uh, loan, and they couldn't be there anymore. We absolutely hated those people. But then about, I don't know, 10 years later, we actually looked back, and we're like, okay, we figured out that actually might have been one of the smartest things ever because we learned what to not do. Obviously, yeah. it's your dream. You yeah. go live it. Don't, don't live it through somebody else's finances. Um, to, uh, to, to capture something like a business that you have your heart all, all of it in there. Contracts. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul on projects. Make sure you're paying your taxes on time. If you need equipment, go get it. You'll make more money. Don't finance your toys. I mean, we learned all sorts yeah. of things from these people and from other people around. Good clients and, and good, you know, good people that uh, had great common sense in business. I grew up with no dad around. Nobody was showing me any common sense. Nobody was showing me how to work on cars in the garage or in the driveway. I, I literally was plastic model cars, Legos, Hot Wheels, BMX bikes, and Volkswagens. That's where it all started. And a dream. And somebody to trust me. Love you. The trust is important. You need that support group. Did it? You just can't do it. Well, then, and then, and then you also get some people that actually know uh, how to be a good friend, how to be supportive, how to be open-minded, how to add to what the forte is. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, good friend is uh, hard to find. I was, I, like I said, I mean, I'm and we, talking and, about and, you and we talk about this all the time. <laughs> Will is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great <certainly> friend. <laughs> Such a good Will, friend. Today. Will's been with you for a long time. Oh yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's one of, he's year, one of the, yeah, yeah. he's one of the original guys. So Will and I actually worked together. He got back from Desert Storm 92, 91, I think, was when we first worked together at High Performance Coatings. He came in there, and uh, we hit it off. You know, he's just a cool dude, and uh, he's smart. He's uh, incredibly smart. Incredibly smart smart and self-taught as well. Uh, We worked together for about three years at HBC. He left, came back for about a year, left again, and then I was in business, and I ran across him, and he was had a a little machine shop set up in his garage, and he was building RC cars and just dicking around with that stuff, and I was like, what are you doing? I don't know. I said, why don't you come down and work with me for a week and see if you want to come and come out and uh, do it? 
And uh, he did. He came down, and I, I I was designing a rollover license plate on a 59 Impala. Yeah. I wanted the license plate gone and just a really thin seam where the plate would go. Rolls back, and it's Frenched. And then you motherfuckers steal that idea, because I might still do it. I'm totally kidding. But anyway, uh, he, he, he knocked that out in like a day and a half, and I was like, and it worked good. And I was like, how the hell did that guy figure this out? And so he's been there ever since. He's uh, 20 years last year. Yeah. Just a just a badass. He is a badass. I mean, when it comes to figuring anything out, how it's going to work on a car, that is your guy. He he is so smart, it's ridiculous. Yep. What's your moment that you look back on? <sighs> you know, I always just think, I mean, I'm just super, super, super happy that I got the opportunity to take this ride. And that's how I look at it. And I don't. I don't want to stop. I just want to keep going. I just want to keep pushing. I don't think there's ever been a moment where I look back and go that I like I've made it because I still want to go further, right? I still want to work harder. I still, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I'm just excited to get all the, I'm excited for all the opportunities that we've gotten and I'm excited to capitalize on all of them. So I just want to push forward and just see, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a moment that when I went like I made it. I'm just excited to see what else we can do, you know, because this journey has been amazing, amazing. So it's good. How about you, John? What? That's a good question for everybody. What was? Yeah. I don't remember what the you question asked. Was. I know <laughs> that was like fucking five minutes I didn't ago. Even remember what the question was? What was the moment? Oh, what is the moment that I look back at? Looking at, uh, uh, it was probably either high school. It was probably either high school. A couple of high school teachers. There was a. There was a couple of bad moments in, in school uh, in 11th grade, um, right about the time I had to go to a different school. And during those conversations, like with my dad and teacher and, and principal, like it was, it was pounded into my head very clearly, like, you're, you're going to be nothing. Yeah. Like, you'll absolutely be nothing. All of the decisions that you've made, you're, anything that you ever, it was, it was pretty fucking harsh. Like, it was you are always making the wrong decisions. Like if you don't listen to, we're just, just listen to us to keep you out of jail. Like, right. This dumb shit. And it was, it was, it wasn't constructive. <clears throat> it was basically like from that. I remember those two people from then on, it's like, Oh, watch. Fuck. And that was just, it was just fuel. Like the whole time. I remember that. I think about that a lot of times. Like, I don't, I don't, re that's one of those ones where you like want to send a picture of like, <laughs> yeah. You, you, I got my own podcast with seven Australian listeners, yeah. right? Yeah. Tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> you got anybody in Australia? You even know yeah, anybody you do, in Australia? Exactly. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. It was <clears throat> that's probably the thing I think. And there's been always like extended family stuff. We've talked about this on yeah. for, you know, extended family, especially at a younger age or whatever, and it's always a you're still me like messing around with those cars, you know? And it was always it's like a a kind of a shot without being so you're like you still right, doing right. like the aren't you doing like the old car thing and stuff and it's like aren't you like still out of a job and yeah right 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 <laughs> right and, and, and Uncle see, Mike you and, can fuck and, off and see and I think that's super funny because I don't lead with anything like if people say well so what do you do is like, I just build custom cars and I leave it at that period yeah. like I'm not the guy to go I'm on a television I don't I don't hit well we're the ones having to fucking answer that yeah. shit all the time that's you right mean, you mean yeah. like on Kit like yeah. on TV yeah, like yeah. On Kit? yeah. just fucking like that. Yeah. just like on TV same shit yeah yeah you know like every every fucking wife that you know says well we, i met this friend you're gonna love their husband you go out for drinks do you know eat dinner <laughs> this first thing oh we just i i've been leading for the last couple of years is just manufacturing we're just manufacturing yeah, I, I and heavy that steel metal fabrication metal fabrication yeah. the, oh like when you have to hang out with the non-car yeah. people yeah if you do car thing oh yeah i'm into i'm big into cars i i'm yeah, that's what all car people say. <laughs> is I, I'm big. I have a Rivian. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so, like, what is exactly you do? Like, what we build? Oh, like you mean like on like TV, like Ken Day? Just, <laughs> yeah. just like that. Those guys are awesome, man. Have you ever ran into them? Yeah, we were yeah. just talking. You look like, like Richard Rollins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were just talking about this on the last podcast. We had Bo Bachman on here, who's super fucking cool. Yeah. And uh Galvin. somehow yeah, we somehow we got on that subject and I was telling him like I'm gonna start carrying a business card that just says no, it's not like uh Gas Monkey. Get, no, what or the fuck fast is Fast and uh, loud. Uh Pimp My Ride. Oh that's the no. one that comes <laughs> yeah, over. Right, so no it's, no, it's not, not like, like Pimp My Ride. Yes, I know Dave Kindig and Kev Dog. 
like, it's You're like, all here. It's we don't have to talk anymore. Yeah, it's like, and I've boom, watched boom, rides. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Right. Let's move past. I'd love this. for you guys to take my car and fix it up. Yeah. Yeah. I would like a fishbowl in front of the yeah. gauges. <laughs> Exhibit's going to hook that up. I think it's a challenge for everybody. And I know yeah. that uh, Roadster Shop probably deals with the same things. Yeah. Um, you get somebody that gets really good at what they do. And it's really difficult because once you show them the the charm, I guess, I don't even know the romance of having a great job or having a great business. All of a sudden it becomes something that people want to have for themselves. I don't blame anybody for that because right. I did the same thing. Of course I didn't go into the same business I was in when I started my business. I was doing ceramic sure. coatings right before that. Uh, we didn't do body and paint there. Um, I went into something I was very passionate about and, and, and uh, I thank Jeff Holm for giving me the opportunities. I'd never been on a plane. My wife had never been on a plane until I worked there. Uh, I didn't have a blue blazer or yellow tie uh, until he gave me his credit card to buy one in uh, at Caesar's Palace across the street from the hotel we were staying in. And then I handed him his receipt and his credit card back. And he's like, holy shit, this is twice the amount of what mine is worth. I was like, well, shit, you didn't give me a budget. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, there was there was great opportunities there for for a welfare kid off the wrong side of the track to to get out of the neighborhood and go do something. And honestly, I, I hit the ground uh, at some point and just started running. And I did uh, what I feel is a great job at HPC. I learned how to streamline things. Uh, I ended up being flown to Oklahoma, Connecticut, streamlining their processes, uh, doing ceramic coatings and training their people how to speed up the process and do a better job. Uh, then I ended up at Arizona Speed Marine and Chandler setting up the uh, uh, the HPC at ASM. We. We. That's right, actually. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you guys were both there. <laughs> that was like Top so, Gun. So, yeah, so Kevin we, worked with me we. for about two or three years. Yes, Ed was, uh, right Ed was before. working for y'all, right? No, Ed yeah, exactly. Yeah, Ed right. Capen was working for us. <laughs> right. No, I'm just kidding. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a good story about Ed. I'll, I'll tell you a story about Ed. But Capen. he was working there at the time, for yeah, sure. Yeah, Ed was still working there for Jim Schaffner at uh, ASM and uh, – I remember uh, the <laughs> Rod and Custom Americruise coming through town. Boyd Coddington was there. Uh, uh, geez, Bray from Hot Rod Magazine was there. Um, Bobby Alloway was there. I mean, there was all these guys on this road tour. We're having barbecue brisk in the shipping area right outside of my shipping office at HBC in Salt Lake. And we have all these badass cars all over the place. And uh, they're sitting in there. And as a hobby, Charity and I, we didn't have a lot of money all the time. You know, I was working for HBC and, and, uh, I would draw cars if we're just sitting around on the weekend. We'd go to Video Verns, get a couple of uh, movies and just watch them. And I'd just sit there and draw cars and I'd hang them up in my office. So Ed Capen's sitting there working for, for uh, Jim and he looks into my office through this big window. He says, who does all those renderings? I said, uh, I do. He goes, those, those aren't bad. You ever thought about doing them for magazines? I said, man, I'd love to. I just never had the opportunity. So it was only a couple of weeks later and he commissioned me to do a 69 Camaro. It was silver with black stripes. It was in Super Chevy and Chevy High Performance. So Brian Pride, one of the master fabricators down at ASM, it was building uh, Dave Hall's new Mad before it went up to Steve's auto restoration. Uh, he was uh, wanting me to do a 64 Malibu for him. So I did a rendering and again, it was in magazines. Jim Schaffner then commissioned me to design the 99 Chevy Silverados, uh, the ASM editions with Budnick wheels, it had trends, billet uh, grills, you know, ground effects and all this kind of stuff going on. And, Pretty soon, everybody inside Utah thought I was a big deal designer outside of Utah. Everybody outside of Utah thought I was a big deal designer inside Utah. So <laughs> I literally had more business and jobs to do. I designed the original Nomad uh, for Dave Hall before I got pulled from ASM and went to Steve's Auto Restoration. Yep. And I actually ran into him last year uh, uh, in his hometown and went to a nice little cocktail uh, deal. And the Nomad, uh, he was a guest. He had just sold the car to another gentleman. Yeah. That car was in that. Do you know whose collection that was? I mean, I'm, I'm spacing them. You've been there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the car. I know yeah. the car very well. Such but. a badass car. So a lot of the interior details actually stayed the same, even though they changed cool. and went swoopier on the outside of the car. So all of these opportunities basically getting me pushed forward, and that's what kind of gave me the idea. Of, like, I really should quit working for Jeff at HBC and go do my own thing. Just see what happens. Throw it at the wall and see if it sticks, you know, kind of a thing. And we learned so many things and uh, along the way to where here we are 25 years later, we've got two buildings. I got 43 ish employees, a car line, um, college, you know, that, that type of stuff is, we're not talking about that. Yeah, no, but it's okay because it's still a good college. It's, it's, Agreed. it's, it's times are changing. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, which again, I think back to what you guys were kind of starting in this segment, 
it's difficult to find people that have that same passion that want to go and do something, yeah. and especially for somebody else. They want to do it themselves. And I really do think that in the near future, I think we're going to find a lot of things changes across the board and across the country where you're going to be hiring subcontractors. They're responsible for their own business. They're going to run it in there, rent them a spot, almost like a, almost like a barbershop, you know? And maybe that's the, maybe that's the switch. They'll get, yeah. they'll get paid more money, but they have to back up what they're doing. They can't just be but, bullshit but, sucking but, off the nipple. But will they though? Like, because that's, that's the thing that comes with size and scale. Like can't warrant that's, that's my biggest like gripe with that whole thing. When you're at your size and scale, like you can absorb that. Like if you, if you have, I mean, I'm sure you, you've had situations where mm -hmm. you've got to absorb things and you've got to redo them and we're the same way. You've got to stand behind your work. If you're a one man band, two man band, even like a three man band, if you have to like repaint a car, yeah, you're, you're, the work yeah, you're, screwed. you're, you're, you're out of it. Right. You're, you are 100% out of business. If you're so you have no choice but to not stand behind that because it's it's fight or flight. You can either be like like as much as you want to stand behind that, you simply have to tell that customer to fuck off. I'm sorry, I can't because yeah, but you, you won't be in business. You won't be in business it. very long, so you got to make yeah. sure that but the guy that thinks he's worth one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a year can actually put up one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars worth of quality, right? Right. Yeah, but I mean, stuff happens, right? It's sure it unforeseen happens. Unforeseen things that yeah. you know it happens to all. But just like just a business owner, know. I have to swallow it. You know, yeah. when, when shit right. doesn't work out, maybe they need to as well. And and I just don't know. I don't know what the right. correct answer is, but I know that you guys, there's no way in hell you don't deal with the same problems. No, we I do. Have. But oh, the, it's, it's, the difference right? is, is when you're, you know, at that size, you can absorb it. To, to yeah, some when you're extent. a one man band, it's like it's like it, it you're either out of business that day, or you're out of business word of mouth because you told the guy to. Right. Right. You know, it's like a pivotal. It's a total pivotal moment. So what do you do? Because you don't have the money to repaint this guy's car if you messed it up in some way, shape, or form. Right. But you can't afford to tell him to fuck off either, right? Because so it's just like a no, because that, it's a that double news travels that a point. lot faster right. than man. I got a shit. really great car over you know the shop. So, yeah. So yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, so what? In the, in a situation, one man band, what do you do? You're, well, what do you do? Yeah. Um, like to you, I get Dave's point. Like you subcontractor. Say say it's unnamed A one Auto Supply, huge shop, right? And they got three guys that they're subcontracting for body works. Three guys are subcontracting for fab fabric. They got a badass painter, right? Mm -hmm. They 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 negotiate each job. They go in there like, hey, this is a badass car. We're, this guy's gonna run this. When it comes to you, it's gonna be ready to spray. You're gonna spray it, cut it, buff it, handle everything like that. I'm willing to pay you sixty five thousand dollars to paint this car, material, whatever it is. Agree upon a price. He sprays it, right? Fucking D lambs or does whatever it is when he's buff it. Now at that point. What does he do? He's gonna have to fucking eat it, right? Well, yeah, he's got to eat it. But how? Because he's a how, business. Just how, like does he eat it? how does how does he eat it when if he's a one man shop? And he's got to keep the lights on. Billable right? hours, then he's working on that for the next two months with no money coming in. Well, don't if fuck he don't, up. If he yeah. doesn't fix it, he ain't getting no more business. He should yeah. probably be trying to get a Walmart job. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Nothing yeah, that's a, that's definitely a that's a great that's a great yeah. point. I mean, it's something it's that tough. you have to. Yeah, think about. I think it's the paint is really the only one that's like that catastrophic. I mean, yeah, you've on, got no. part, you've got component <clears throat> failures, man. I mean, a, a motor grenades, a trans. I mean, we've had a L, like a brand new oh, LT4 yeah. that just decided to say "fuck you," I'm gonna just lock up for no apparent reason. But even that, like the burden of like pulling it out, waiting to get it warranted, yeah. if they will warranty, yeah. it's those are tough things to deal with. Well, you know, you got to deal with that stuff as a business anyway, not to get off topic, but I mean, we, we literally only install aftermarket parts on everything. If something doesn't work, I can't charge my customer to pull their components back out right. and change them and then charge them again. He just, he trusted me to get the right parts. Right. But on the other flip side, the suppliers don't go, oh yeah, I really feel bad about that. We'll pay you for the labor to take it out, put it in. Oh, they won't even and pay you for stuff. the freight Shit, they don't even, yeah, no, yeah. no. Let alone get yeah, go ahead and ship yeah. that back and we'll get you taken care of. Give well, me send me a call tag. Yeah. You already send put, me a call yeah. tag. You already put a finger where it's not supposed to go. It's like. <laughs> yeah. And then like, that's a sucks. great point. You know, like I said, businesses our size, they can absorb some of that stuff, but one man shops. I mean, it's, it's, it's super cutthroat. Yeah. You're, you're get barely getting by. Cause I mean, all these cars are super nice and tons of money, but there's not a lot left on the table when they're actually Shit. done. Right. right. Yeah. It's very yeah, slim it's, pickings. There's not some 
huge margins there. There's not huge there's margins. There's not even margins. Yeah, yeah, right. sometimes, sometimes the larger the margin, there's a negative in yeah. front of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It goes this way. Yeah. Yeah, not this way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, say you're, delivering, say you're uh-huh. delivering a car and you don't have a California car cover on it, door comes open. You and the pooch are having a date. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's a prime example, right? Yeah, you yeah. didn't you did have you the did car cover. Oh, wrong. that could have gone so bad. There yeah. was a, a couple of years ago, there was a, I think it was that gold colored Chevy truck. <clears throat> Uh, 47 to 54. I don't remember what it was, but it was chopped and section channeled, all that kind of stuff. And yep, it got pinkies. damaged on the way. They put it back in the can. They came back the next year and just got a grade eight. But it was, it was a nice truck. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I mean, I that mean, stuff happens. Can I can't happen. imagine after five, almost five no. years building that car, having no. something happen no. and put it back in the can. Cause he would have seen it at this point because when he left Salt Lake, uh, he was on the road trying to beat storms. There was a big, big thing. Yeah, there was a storm the, coming yeah, in. He right, was, cha- was, he was leaving, literally getting chased. We were all like, please get there. Well, and the whole thing about it is it was really cool. I was talking to a, like a, like a younger builder in, Ch- in Chicago when we were here. And he, we, I was telling him all the kind of trials and tribulations, same things we were saying. He's like, oh, so you guys deal with the same thing that, that I deal with? I was like, absolutely. Just on a larger scale. Like, right. I have the same so problems key. everybody else has. Like, yeah. it's not easy. We still have engines that have mm-hmm. problems. We still have power steering pumps that stop working. We have cars that just don't work for who knows why? And you got to figure it out. And and it's like you're just trying to, you know, figure it all out. And we have the same problems across the board as everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah guys should know that and not get, like, discouraged. It's just how you handle those problems. 100%. Get right. Yep. We've got, uh, before we get to some standard questions, for some reason we've got a box in here that we're supposed to open. Do we? Yeah. I don't know what this is about. It just says. Is it moving? It's a severed yeah. head. Is it a severed head? If it's a oh, severed that's a small head. head. That's a very <laughs> it's a small box. Wayne Wayne world. Somebody yeah. send some. A gun rack. <laughs> this is this was put in here by Elia. This was put in our by our. Uh, Did Elia get us a gift? I don't know. It's just I'm just doing. That's a cool it. knife because you can. Hey yo, I do want to say really quick before for, you open you can that. Travel for a while before you open that. I started carrying knives after listening to this podcast. Did you really? One hundred percent. Well, I don't have one on it now because I'm a full grown man now. I know, right? Uh. World strong. Oh fuck! This is stupid. Why did Why did he do this? World strong is smelling salts. This is not a good idea. What is that? Smelling salts. Ooh. Uh, why the hell would I want that? I don't. That's it might wake you up. Did you? Did he? Th- did somebody think we were gonna fall asleep? Uh. Actually ridiculous is what it says. Uh, it says on the bag, actually ridiculous. Yeah, right. Yeah, look at that. Actually, <laughs> hey, not, is there a I have experience with those. You have experience. Well, not that brand. Sauce? Yeah. So most after, sophisticated I, formula. Kyle's bachelor party, hanging out with a bunch of dudes that are in their twenties. Yeah, They're, they all show up with smelling salts. Is this it's a, like thing? a thing? It's a thing to it's do. It's a thing. Really? Like I've never even heard of it. it. Me neither. It's I've like, never heard of it. Yeah, I know people. All, I don't know. I mean, if it was like a what do you do? Just sniff it? Yeah, and then you go like. Do not stick it under all, other people's noses. You punch drywall. Yeah, do not s- sniff. Monster energy, smash a hole in the drywall. Do. That's Use immediately before intense workout. Oh, let's uh, give, give me some of that. Yeah, you are might you need. Are you going to work out right now? Dude, have you seen the guy? Have you, you've seen the Instagram page, right? The old dude. Is he ripped? He's No, he's like weird looking and he's got like knee braces and arm braces. He's got to be like 60. It's my neighbor. He, turned, he cranks like <laughs> Megadeth. And every time, smelling salt. Oh, I've dude, seen yeah. that. I've seen he's that, dude. dude. He was like, like yeah, he's, he's like an old biker, dude. Yeah. And he just starts lifting yeah. crazy weights. You just, you just, you've I never done that before. You literally just put your nose in and took yeah. a big old whiff. I've never opened the... It, the package smells bad, and it's not even opened yet. S- take a sniff of that. I don't think this is real. Yeah, it's very... It's, you feel strong. That's very, it's, did you say chlorine. very unique? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like... Uh, Stings the nostrils. It's like bleach. It smells bleach. like bleach. Really? Yeah. You know, I always get uh, uh, prepared horseradish for my cocktail sauce when I get like you know, yeah. seafood and shit. Yeah. And it, like, like last night at Gibson's, man, dude, I put uh, myself in. Hey, let me smell that. Orb. Light, it was awesome. you up. I loved it. I loved What's it. What's the? Uh, but I'm not sure about this. I'm going to probably take a small sniff. What's the? What's a, the directions? Ooh, I think you Look crack them. That does smell you, like bleach. There, there, what's the instructions on the back? Okay, read the back. For it like says, it a says, second. Do immediately before intense. Exertion immediate close bottle after each use. Like you oh just open the bottle and sniff oh my it. God. <laughs> I just opened it. It's so bad. Warm. Aren't, there's not. It says warm to room cranks. temperature before use. Store upright in a cool place. Get it closer. 
Oh, there's got to be like individual. Are you pumped now? I don't think you know. I, are I, you it's pumped? Sealed. I can't even. Are you pumped? Dude, it's not, it's open so, the bag. It's open so the strong. bag. Oh, it's just full blown salt in there. Yeah, you're I just supposed to whip little, it. Little, oh, yeah. <laughs> look at <laughs> Dave. I like this. Take, oh, they, look, 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 he's ready it's to like rock like just by like smelling the bag. Oh, you get a snap into a sleep. You're like holding an apple. I will, I will say. <laughs> take a sniff. Been hanging out with Bob Johnson. Yeah, try it. You should keep the cap closer than that. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what? I, that's why hey, everyone. I hey, it. everyone's jazzed now. Look. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, if you ain't got some, get some. It, when you once you get it. What is that? <laughs> so like, if you're that, that smells like a pool house. <laughs> it's ammonia. Woo! Don't, don't go too deep. Dude. Don't go too deep. Yeah, just go hard. light. Holy shit! I just cleared all my sinuses out. Dude, it's kind of nice. I tried it. Hey, well, I'm, I'm ready. I'm pumped now. Let's hit oh, the gosh. gym. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's not bad. Hey, who sent that here for us? So, uh, Arlia. So, what's yeah, the idea behind that? So, what, do you, so what do you do with it? You just, you just sniff that instead of like a I don't know. cup of coffee? You just it's, like, oh. This was the <laughs> amount of instructions that I got. This was sitting in the thing, open on air with in studio guest from Elia. Oh, so that's the amount. Thank of, you. <laughs> Mission yeah, accomplished. I think we should shit. sprinkle that throughout his office. Holy it's, uh, shit. It's fucking potent, dude. Yeah. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'll fucking go. go. It's a formidable I'll go, scent. I'll go bench 280 right now. <laughs> Let's get this. Let's get We're ready to hit the gym. Hey, that's what it says yeah. on the back. Like, it, it shows it a dude with weights. It hits you. Hmm. It says, do not sift. Do not sniff. Lightly waft. We all we did was no, we, fucking we, sniff. We didn't read the instructions. <laughs> hey, car guys aren't the best at following uh, instructions. My eyes are right. bleeding. Yeah. Oh, fuck. All right. So it's stand. It made fucking uh, Dave's hair stand up again. again? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, you, in place. Hey, Charity, is my hair messed up. Yeah. You want to hit in? this? Come on. You Come need on, a little, baby. You need a little upper. <laughs> What's the oh. intended usage? I don't know. I've never seen this before. Do not warm to room temperature before use. Store upright oh. in a. It's We're been in sitting room in a room box in room temperature. I think it says whole... warm to room temperature. Is that right? Or do so not. Okay, your yeah, friend. You, okay you my read, bad. You my can bad. read better. No, my bad. It says warm to room temperature. <laughs> not where to. Yeah. What? Fuck. I'm, I'm a little. Dude, it's got a little bit of that cocktail sauce kind of vibe, though, where it's like. Yeah, you want to go like, back? Yeah. You, you want to. You want another I sniff, wonder, Dave? I wonder how that would be on a sandwich. Just after. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> but you could really you were, fuck with your friends, yeah. though, right? Like, <laughs> you're been to St. Elmo's. I feel like I'm wearing it. Like St. Elmo's in <laughs> Indianapolis. Me, man. The cocktail sure, sauce there. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think I've ever. Oh, dude. Oh, wait, I did do that. St. Elmo's. Didn't we go there? That. That's the what, world in Indy. World no. famous town. Uh -uh, I've never. Oh, been that's no. I'm thinking of. Uh, if you know, like, we were in Nashville, there was a place that had uh, kind of that vibe. Maybe a, as strong as that is. That's. Just a fingertip in the cocktail sauce. It's that. Yeah, bad. they're legendary. Ooh, you like? I know. I've been where you're talking. And they're Ooh, massive I know shrimp. I've been you just keep going back. Yeah, it's like, always oh, it's so good. You're just breathing fire out your yeah. nose. Right you're like, let's let me have another, please. Yeah. yeah. All right. So standard question time. First up, favorite car movie, and why? Right. Do you remember what you said last time? On the six seconds, mm -hmm. got everything for everybody. Yeah. I've listened to a ton of these podcasts. This is an opportunity to get, you know, change your answer. Yeah, this is a, I've to listened it. to a ton of podcasts and, and I've heard a lot of people explain their movies and, and I'm still going to have to go with Gone in 60 Seconds. It's, it's just got more cars uh, than I think any other movie and more different cars. Yeah. I think it was, I think it's a, an American classic. You like it better than Ford versus Ferrari? Mm, oh, when I, I quite, watched Ferrari I the other day, see how yeah, we start talking I just watched about that this? movie. Um, I haven't watched the Enzo. Enzo. I haven't watched the Enzo one. Yeah. Uh, Dude, do not watch fucking it. watch it. It is the it's the worst fucking movie in the history of the world. What? Yeah, we, For, me and my son watched it. It sucks. It's not watchable. It's so fucking Ferrari. Bad. The that Enzo. The, yeah. Ford versus Ferrari. No, no, Ford versus no, Ferrari. Sorry. no, no, sorry. Sorry. no, 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 I watched yeah, it on it a plane like, and I had to, I forgot my, my headphones died. So I had to get the airplane one. So I couldn't hear half the movie. I couldn't get through it. it and I might have fell asleep a couple happen? times. Because I, I turned it off. Did yeah, you should have <laughs> kept watching it. it was so just watch the whole damn thing. It was so slow. It's a little slow, but if, do you own a Ferrari? No. Okay. No, own a Ferrari. Watch the fucking movie. I thought we okay. covered that already. Yeah, we weren't, <laughs> but we weren't live. Too. So I guess like a, Ford versus even the movie you can't watch. 
<laughs> you fucked me. <laughs> yeah, I Ferrari <laughs> owning. Yeah. How Ferrari did you even watch Ford guidance? versus Ferrari? Yeah, yeah, two things that's, that you don't own. It. <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible one for me to watch. That's yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Did you ever watch Man on the Machine about uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini? Yeah, great that, movie. Yeah, that was good. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. It might be a little faster paced, but a little bit more. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell you. Um, no. He doesn't own a Lamborghini the... either, so not really his speed. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. either. Well, you know, Dave, and I tell you all this time, so I catch up on the podcast all the time. And and one movie was brought up the other day, and I just remembered what they, it was Cannonball Run. Yeah, that was somebody a great brought movie. that That's up. That's my shit. And yeah. I was like, okay, I was That's like, one of my that That's is like my a era. great yeah. movie. Like, I totally spaced that because, you know, Gone in 60 Seconds is current, it's fresh in your mind. And then somebody says that Cannonball still from Run. Like the early 90s, though. Cannonball Run. And you think about all the scenes where, like, the girls get out of the Lamborghini and paint the, and paint the sign. Like, that is so a many cool bomb stories movie. happening. Yeah. You know, and then you got, you got, you got the, the ape driving, and really they're not driving. Like, that's a good, that's a good that's car a good movie. movie. Yeah. And it's you sometimes you forget you so much movies, cool. right? You got, the, you got the square body dualies. You got so many cool little fucking things in there. Yeah. Cannonball Run's a good one. You got Burt Reynolds. You got Burt Reynolds. You got. Who, who here's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound like a dick. I'm not going to say it. No, well, no say go ahead, it, dude. I was about to say. Who, who else here has drove uh, Burt Reynolds over the auction? Yeah, I have not. Uh, okay, no, I haven't. No. Pretty no, thanks, cool guy. Thanks, Dave. I'm thanks. just saying, hey, you know what? This, this life has been charmed. If I was, <laughs> if nothing else, I was born. And humble. I had born the, humble. I had I was born humble and now here we are. <laughs> well, there goes that. <laughs> Anybody want gravy on their potatoes? <laughs> uh, uh, Did she have to change her name when you got married? No. Nah, charity she, seems perfect for what Well, I always say in. all my proceeds go to my favorite charity, but she's actually <laughs> responsible for half of what she gets. So. <laughs> Best Dude. piece of it go ahead. I, I like what Cody brought to the table when he was talking about like run-ins with the law, right? That was a good, that's I a nice good story to mix it up because that brought a lot of, <laughs> a lot of fun stuff. God. Like, uh, I mean, I'll leave it vague, but it's favorite like favorite law enforcement. Interaction. Like, interaction I'll be, I'll, I have a right. great, I have one of my favorite law enforcement stories ever. <laughs> Not and surprising. I'll leave, and I'll leave that one to you, okay, but this you. is another one. So we're headed to a show. I'm in the toter. I'm cruising along. I'm going across the 80 Wyoming somewhere. We're headed back east somewhere. I don't remember. It's it's in a blur. Right but, back to the 50s. Well, whatever. And I'm cruising along. We have a toter. It has a fridge. And it is packed with, with Bud Light and beer and all the things that we have at the car shows, right? I'm cruising along. And it opens. And all of the things come flooding out. And I'm like, gosh. So I pull over. I pull down on, on the on-ramp. And I pull up. And I stop. And I'm back there. And I'm packing all these things back in the fridge. and. I look up and I see lights in the mirror. Like, I don't know what's going on. So oh, that's my dream. That's days of thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got a concealed weapon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> that, that's about sort of my favorite scene. The question is, is he going to use it? <laughs> so anyways, I pack the fridge up. I close the fridge. I get back up to the driver's seat because it's a toter. And I sit in the seat and I roll the window down. And the officer turns around and goes, hey, you know, it's illegal to park on Wyoming on ramps, he goes, Oh, Kev dog. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> sweet. Like that's winning. Like sweet. I and, like your boss so much better. You're under arrest. Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't arrest me at the time. He just said, Hey, it was nice to meet you. And he just told me to, to get on. So and it was great. It was great. So. I don't like to use this card, but it ain't got no credit limit. <laughs> <laughs> in the, in the toter, we used to talk to, there were a couple other dudes that had toters back in the day and there was a fucking move. Let me ask you if you've ever done it. Okay. You're fucking cruising. It's straight. You're on I 80. Like, Nebraska. Uh, there's no, it is laser there's straight. Only one and you are like that's done that. And you're like, man, I am thirsty. And you find yourself like <laughs> <laughs> I think I you, know, yeah. you you air that yeah, you, down. You kind of look yeah, you cruise yeah. down. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like that's straddle the line. <laughs> yeah. We're good. We're right there in the middle. You know, I wish I could say that I've done that, but I have not. I really I, wish because I really feel like that's epic. Dude, I, there he is taking a piss out the yeah. driver's window. He's driving still. I'm not I'm man enough or stupid enough to do it, but I know some dudes who have. No, I mean, we've like swapped. Regularly. I've swapped drivers before going down the road. I yeah. feel like that's pretty standard. But yeah, going running yeah, back sure to the fridge changing. and getting a drink. And, there uh, is a there's a story. We'll keep the names out. I was having to grab something off the couch, put it in cruise control, hold the steering wheel back here to grab it. Mm, yeah, I, I say that's fair. That's yeah. fair. There was a shop that used to be in business, right? And they had a large toter home. And there was a time that was a driver and a passenger. The driver said, I've got to go up to pee. Let's swap drivers real quick. So the driver gets up, 
and goes to pee, he goes to the back of the toter and is entering the bathroom and looks up, and the passenger is still asleep and never oh, got <laughs> over <laughs> into the toter. And that is a, oh, shit. Back to the, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, I normally yeah. drove alone. It's a nice, like I said, I mean, I really enjoy driving. My, you know, and I believe ha- last podcast, you know, a lot of my family is either truck drivers or in the military or both. And it's just a nice time to kind of pause on life and just think to yourself, think about the future, think about all the hard work that you've done in the past. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's just kind of, it's a nice time to reflect, clear at least for head. me. Yeah. So clear your head, just kind of a reset. Catch up on some right. oil and whiskey too. One, yeah, and always yeah, be catching up because <laughs> right. the music just isn't the same these days. So it's, it's tough, nice. It's man. nice to just it's plug into yeah. you guys and listen. <laughs> Well, Jim Beyonce's and- doing country now. So there's- <laughs> oh, really? oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't everybody else doing country now, yeah. too? Did you ever brake check anybody in the bathroom while driving? No. That was another fun move. No. <laughs> Wait till he goes up to go to the bathroom. He's always running solo. He yeah, see, I'm all by myself. These are all these fun things that I never got to do. Yeah, like you hear the bathroom door close. <laughs> it's like, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> you got used to it, though, because then it would be a... You know, you get, you get in there, uh, right, didn't right, get me yeah. right through the door, yeah. back yep. to the front of the truck. What's uh, what's your best uh, popo interaction story? Well, there we were, early days. Kevin was married, uh, and uh, his wife, his ex wife, Jen, still a great friend of ours. Charity and I, and Kevin and uh, and Jen, we were on our way to SEMA on uh, Halloween night. Yeah, it was Halloween, have kids, so we trick or treated. 10 o'clock in, in the evening, in the, uh, we got on the road in a Honda Civic. So driving from Salt Lake to Vegas is roughly five and a half, six hours. We're so tired. It's in the middle of the night. We decide to stop in St. George, Utah. Uh, <laughs> we stop at the village inn or the, the, the day's inn. There's a village inn across the parking lot. So we just get a double bed. We're just going to grab some sleep because we're both, we're all, everybody's tired. Charity and I and Jen lay down. He hadn't eaten anything, so he goes across the parking lot to Village Inn. I gotta get the, no, it was Danny's because I needed Sorry, a moon's Danny's. over my hammy. Yeah, moon, um, m- moon's I mean, that's over a his move, hammy. right? Solid yeah. pull. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, <laughs> there wasn't no any waffle. waffle House. No Waffle House, so, <laughs> so Danny's will fair, do right. yeah, make, Danny's make is the next best thing for sure. <laughs> so, so there we are passing out, and we get a knock at the door, and Jen thinks Kevin just lost his key, and so she's got to open the door. It's a police officer giving us the car keys because he got arrested. For what? Uh, for apparently eating breakfast. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's what my so ex-wife Jen, says. Jen says, so the guy says, uh, "Are you uh, with Kevin Sheely?" And she's, "Yeah, mm-hmm. it's my husband." And she, she, he says, "Well, we've arrested him for what? Eating breakfast?" She says, and she, he says, "No, and decent for experience. consumption. Yeah, that was it. Consumption, <laughs> com- consumption of alcohol waiter. by a minor. <laughs> what? It was an old ticket he hadn't paid. The yeah, guy, I was twenty-two at the time. Yeah, consumption <laughs> by a minor." And she goes, yeah, it's an old ticket. He had a warrant, so we're taking him in. Uh, you can pick him up at the Purgatory Correction Facility, which is just back oh. towards Salt Lake. Pur- so purgatory. I'm hearing all this. Say yeah, it again. That purgatory. No yeah, Purgatory. <laughs> Hardcore. Uh, uh, none of your Australian people are going to yeah, fuck that place. So anyway, so Jen and I get up. Charity stays in the hotel room. We get up. I have a couple hundred dollars on me. I can't even remember. It's like $300 and some change, whatever, to get him out. And at that time, of course, we're scrounging because, yeah, we yep. haven't, like, hit. We're just barely in business, right? So Jen and I go hit a couple of ATMs, and then we start following. And at this point, too, phones don't have GPS on them. We're flip phone people at this point. Yep. So we're trying to find the fucking address for this place. So it's out out in the middle of, like, a barn area where, like, there's horse corrals and sagebrush and bullshit, and we can't find it. We literally are driving around for, like, two hours almost. I'm so pissed off. I haven't had any sleep. I was tired. I'm hungry. I'm pissed off. So we you were finally, pissed off. I almost had a boyfriend. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't you, got, you got breakfast. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's that's that still counts. Yeah, okay. it does. Yeah. <laughs> so so he's in love again, and we're trying to find him to get him out of love. <laughs> so we finally find the place. We I'm like, love God damn! We kept calling him. It's like, where the fuck is your place? So we finally find it. Well, there's a little sagebrush, and there's a tiny little sign behind the sagebrush, and a 15 cent light bulb that probably had burned out. You couldn't see it. Oh, yeah. Dave was heated. So we finally get he in there. This heated. squeaky booted little shit walks out. Like five, like five foot four? Five foot ish. Okay. Five foot ish. He walks out. It has to be cash an exact amount. So I count out the money and he just like, he takes it and he counts it out again. He says, you're $10 short. I said, no, I'm not. Count it again. He counts it again. Yeah, you're $10 short. I took it from him and I put it in little piles so you could see it. <laughs> There's an extra $3. Buy yourself a Slurpee, I said. 
That was bad. Uh, he didn't, didn't like that? that? Yeah, he didn't, no, no, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like jokester, that. Huh? He didn't but like gets, that. It gets so much worse. So because in the whole time now, his ex-wife, Jen, is like a firecracker. She's very, very funny. She's, yeah, she's riling Dave she's up. She's gotten me pumped up for two hours fucking around in the desert trying to find this correction facility. We can see it from the freeway. We can't find where the hell it's at. You can't find the entrance. So I'm so upset. I'm like getting rude with this guy. And he, and he finally goes, I said, just buy yourself a squishy. So he starts waddling with his squeaky little boots and dragging his pistol like he's wearing his dad's cowboy boots and shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a cute little guy. Y'all hit it off. And I said, I said, hey, y'all bonded. So then I just went one more step. I said, hey, Barney, if you could hurry up. I was really trying to just stop and get some sleep. And I've been here all fucking night trying to find you guys. A 15 cent light bulb. I would have been here hours ago. So let's snap it up. Yeah, and he it was goes, bad. So anyway, so now behind doors where I'm not seeing this, which I get caught up later on. Guy comes in, and he says, uh, blah, 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 to this big dude. And he goes, uh, hey, what's your buddy's name that's bailing you out? And he says, uh, Dave Kindig. And he says, they all spell his last name. <laughs> yeah, they're high-fiving. So now the big dude comes out. And uh, can I see your ID? And I was like, yeah, you oh. bet. Are you bailing? Uh, oh, you, yeah. Are you bailing? Oh, Kevin yeah. Out? I said, <laughs> you bet. I've and unfortunately goes, been in <laughs> your situation <laughs> before. He shows me a piece of paper. He goes, is that you? Tinted window ticket, gone to warrant, West Jordan, Utah. I'm like, yeah. He goes, put your hands behind your back. Like, oh, you got <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he goes, I was like, you got to be shitting me. He's like, shut They're your not. mouth. They're not your, shitting no, me. he wasn't They're shitting me. They're not shitting you. <laughs> and they didn't send Barney out this time. This isn't the big dude, right? And so he handcuffs me. And Jen, I was like, it's like another 200 bucks almost. And I'm like, oh, God. So they take me in. Kevin's putting his shoes on. Well, I bailed you out. Well, no, you're you're getting ahead of the game. So oh, I bad. walk in there and I was like, this is bullshit. Kevin's like, shut up, Jeremy. And I was like, yeah, this town needs a fucking enema. Oh, yeah. He's just rolling. He is mad. Now he's in jail. I wouldn't sit down. The guy says, sit down and shut up. I said, this town needs a fucking enema. And all of a sudden, he <laughs> picks me up. I'm still handcuffed with my hands behind my back. The dude picks me up from my hands and my arm. Yeah, it's doable. Feels not good, hardly man. touching the ground. He threw me into a brick wall, literally 10 feet away. Grabbed me again, threw me another 20 feet, at least into a wooden bench. He goes, you're in a big fucking hurry, huh, buddy? You're not getting out of here for, for two days. And I'm like, I got to be in SEMA like tomorrow. You don't have, you have any idea? Like this car that we're, you know, we, we got all kinds of big shit going on. We're so, going to be somebody. I like, no, we didn't have shit down there. We're just walking the SEMA show. Oh, oh yeah. We, we didn't have any. We didn't have I mean, this is a 98 Honda Civic four door. Like, this like, is early, no money, no nothing. Yeah, I had uh, zero credit cards and zero credit. So, anyway, uh, about five minutes later, dude comes back in. I was like, hey, officer, I'm sorry. And I'll apologize uh, profusely and, and send the guy I called Barney. And I, I'll apologize to him too. He goes, <laughs> How can't he have you doing that in here? He says, it'll be a riot in no time. And it ends up that Barney knew him from the mini truck clubs. So you're pissing off. I'm, He's I'm pissing nobody. off your buddy. I'm nobody. He was I'm, just, I'm just a Volkswagen dude customizing dumb <laughs> shit. And he's a mini trucker. And I got lippy with the cop thinking I was the big shit on campus because his ex-wife getting me all riled up. <laughs> And yeah. I was like, I learned my lesson. I dude, I had bruises and cuts and shit all over my Yeah, those things get tight. Oh, my God. oh yeah, fucking yeah. tight, tight. Yeah, and then so and it was Especially super by a pissed off. And guy. it was super funny because I had enough cash to bail me out, but it, you can't you bail can't yourself, bail yourself out, out, right? So as soon as I got out, I like turned around. I'm like, I'm here to bail my buddy out. <laughs> and then obviously Dave apologized. So we were able to bail out and actually make it to the SEMA show and that there year. The sun came up and I'm shit. like, this was a shit night. <laughs> what a shit night. That, it's a good story. Good. That can't be beat. There's no it's fucking, a great story. No oh, I got another one. My cousin Brad and I, my cousin Brad had a 67 uh, uh, Firebird yeah. jacked up, 400 big block in it. And uh, we're out on, it's a beautiful day. He's just got the thing tuned in. It's just, run, you know, center line sticking out and the jacked up, uh, you know, rear end and the traction bars and all this stuff. We're on a main drag out in West Valley, Utah. Pull up to a light. We've got the windows down. This nerd pulls up in a Ford Taurus. Sitting there, the lights getting ready to turn, turn uh, green, and leaned over to the passenger seat. And I said, "Bye." Rrr, my cousin laid a patch like at least a hundred yards. Just smoked the shit out of this car, right? Woo! <laughs> it's an undercover cop. He pulls up. You wave bye to him. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it, gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. He says, uh, "License and registration," and uh, uh, no, not on me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. <laughs> They took his license, SR-22, for like three years. Oh, I mean, the also, worst. they threw the book at him. I'm like, 
I feel really yeah. bad. So yeah. Brad's actually still one of my very, very best friends. And That's he does the tours on awesome. Fridays. Yeah. And I'm surprised he ever forgave me for that because, man, his life was shit for I seven have, years. I think he had I have <laughs> never heard another story of, of somebody arrested at the police station while trying to do the right thing. Oh, because yeah. I, You've done that? Yeah, I have. Isn't that I, fun? I, I, you, you, it happened I, to you, too? Yeah. That was one of my arrest stories. How many fucking times have you been arrested? We got to do better three, background checks. Three or, three or four. Uh Oh, small, I learned after the things. first time. I, 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 yes, sir. No, sir. I had Absolutely. The sec, I, was, I was arrested once in high school, just a, a, a FTF failed, failure trip here. You know, at, at right, that right, point, right. Phil will tell you this. My motto has always been like, what's the worst that can happen? And I generally find out what the worst that can happen is. And then I go from there. So, like, you get a, I got a, a, a speeding ticket, like, small in a, in a city that I'm like, I don't even fucking go there anymore. Like, yeah, like who cares, right? What's the, they got so many other things to worry about. At like 17, you're like, hey, this is a, like, hey, we are the same in careful, so many ways. Back. There's like so many people around. Like you're sure, seriously telling me like in 96, they're worried about me. Come, like, fuck it. And apparently I did have to go back to that city. I got pulled over and FTA, whatever, get a warrant. So, so I graduate high school and I'm going to my first year of college, I've got a job at advanced auto parts. I'd always worked at Napa auto parts and doing some other stuff as a porter. They didn't have a Napa up there in this small town. I get a job at advanced as a delivery driver. I always worked in auto parts. Great. Part of that. I was already hired. I had to start the next day and move into my dorm at the same day. Part of that is I had to bring a driving record, right? So I got to go to the local police department, just get a driving <laughs> record. Oh, so no. I go, Entrapment. I go in there that morning, right? I'm headed to I'm headed to college, right? We're I'm my car's loaded up, little ninety seven Honda Civic loaded up. We're ready to go. I'm going by myself. Reoccurring theme in the Civic. Yeah, yeah. Civic <laughs> Civic will so get you close. locked up. <laughs> Civic will get you locked up in a heartbeat. So I go in and I'm like, Hey, here's my driver's license. I just need to get a driving record for a job I'm starting, you know, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. She's like, Let's go ahead, sit down over there, I'll get it. So I sit down and even at that young age, I'm self-aware, right? I'm, I'm aware of the surroundings, whatever. So I, I see her thing, and then I see her look, and then another guy comes in, and they're both looking at the monitor. And I'm like, I don't know if it takes a supervisor to look at <laughs> shit. What's going on? So Run. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like. <laughs> that so they, then, should, that they should just be printed off and handed to me. Yeah, that just, should be gone, right? Yeah, this seems like it's, uh, it's like a lot of, maybe there's other stuff going on, right? Maybe there's an emergency <laughs> in the area, right? So then the guy, the, the, that guy, he looks, and he looks out at me. And then the, the, the like door with no handle on it opens. He comes out. He's like, oh, Mr. Henning. I said, yeah. He's like, uh, you're coming to get a driving record. Yet? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have the driving record? Uh, hey, we're working on that, whatever. Why don't you go ahead and stand up? And I, <laughs> oh, I've heard, oh, just stay here. I've heard that tone. I've heard that tone from <laughs> the right, right, right. Like, mm, fuck. I'm good. I'm, I'm good right here. And I was like, hey, go ahead and stand up. I'm like, fuck. He's like, you got a warrant out of, you know, for Scythe County. We're, we're, we're two counties away now. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit. All right. And uh, so he turns around, hands up. I was like, hell, you know, what's the deal? And I said, well, you're going to have to wait for a, a sheriff to come from that county and come pick you up. And I was like, man, can I get some slack? Like, I came here. Like, you didn't have to catch me. Like, I came here to get something. I obviously didn't know that there was a warrant. He's I surrender. Like, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, you're going to have to, like, do the whole thing. So car sits there. I wait for, like, three hours. I didn't get to college. Oh, a whole fucking deal. But that's... I've never heard anybody that's gone to the police <laughs> and station got, and, then got arrested. and then got arrested. Well, you know, and the funny thing about that ticket that I got arrested for, this was an underage drinking ticket. So I was kind of the same as you. I mean, I used to get two low vehicles, tent tickets, Neons, all these, lights. exactly. I get all these tickets and I was like, I was the same. I was like, what's the worst that's going to happen? I didn't pay these. Yeah. So finally I get pulled over. I get booked into this jail. They OR me out. I go to this jail and I was like, finally, you know, I'm an adult now. Let me take care of all this. Well, Apparently I'm, there was one. More. I missed one. Yep. <laughs> okay. I missed one. Yeah. They and keep, that's what keep, I got arrested for. They keep in the St. greatest George. records. Right. <laughs> like they remember everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, when, when they want to. Yeah. Right. So to you seven Australians out there listening, remember <laughs> they always remember. Yeah. yeah. Just pay the ticket. You just pay, I pay, promise yeah, you, one hundred percent. Right then, one hundred percent. You can't. So much less embarrassing. No. <laughs> oh shit. Dude, I, yeah. I've, oh, I've been good, funny. man. I've knock on wood. Uh, only, I would. I don't know about. Yeah. I, I wouldn't tout the. I've been good. You haven't been caught. That's awesome. Yeah. That makes but that's a different. The only, that's a different that good the only time caught. I've been in a cell was in fucking high school. That's mm -hmm. it. Since what, eighteen. What did you do in high school? I knocked some kid out in high school. 
had a little altercation. He deserved it though. He yeah. did. Hundred yeah, percent. Good for you then. And it was like it was bad. It was really bad. And he was seventeen. I was eighteen. And they turned it into a major fucking ordeal. Right. Where they were gonna like charge me for like a felony for assaulting a minor, an adult. Oh. And they fuckers took me in a police car out of high school and put me in a cell at Deerfield fucking police station. And look at you now, you work on old cars. Yeah, right? (laughs) Showed them. Showed them. Did you explain to him that he was just a little bitch? Well, yeah, no. Well, I didn't explain to them, but I told them the situation. But I mean, they can figure it out for themselves. He's on the floor and you're in class again. (laughs) Right. Yeah, but when when all the dust settled because they made this out, this was going to be a huge thing. Like, I'm going to fucking jail for this, right? Right. And you're not, uh, you ain't got the body for jail, dude. But and the kids, <laughs> <huh? laughs> maybe you do, maybe, maybe you do. Wait, but like, serious question though, when you got back to school after all this was over, did you, get, did you, oh, show you were tattoo? like, I've been to jail. Dude. Well, it was a big deal. Dude, it was in the. I did hard right. time. It was in the courtyard, like in the courtyard in the middle of school, and they took the kid. An ambulance came and they took him out wow. in a fucking stretcher because I KO'd him. And then he like fell back and it was, yeah. it was really ugly. And they took him out of there in a fucking stretcher and everything. Well, the kid's dad didn't refuse to press charges because of the situation. And he was teaching him a lesson for, he shouldn't have fucked with me is the, the way he was. So it's he a taught, good lesson. Yeah. I bet you it was kids somewhere right dude, now. It was justified. It was a justified ass whooping. Yeah. And, That's the way life should be. Right. Well, 100%. He yeah. fucked around. He found out. He found out. <laughs> hey, just like everything else, though, fellas, times are changing. You do yeah, that yeah, now, you, yeah. you'll definitely catch a case. Back in our oh, day, yeah. you, you got in yeah, a fight. It's not the same anymore, for sure. A couple out days later, if you're cool, maybe you, you, get, you guys make up and end up being yep. fuck, great friends. Great but friends. now, yeah. nope, you're, you're going to jail, attempted murder. Yeah, dude. Is. But to, to that point, like I hung out with that kid after that. Like yeah. we were at parties together because it was there's a lot more respect. There, oh, for yeah. this time, right? Yeah, there was a little quieter. A little quieter. Don't get amount of respect. You see what yeah. happened last time, yeah. right? <laughs> Mr. Jeremy. Yeah. Mr. Jeremy. Yes, yes, sir. The Mr. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I will take another beer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, man, you're running over to the cool. Grab me one. Oh, yeah. You're up. Yeah. Don't be a little bitch like in high school. Give me a beer. Oh, that's too funny. The good old days, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, you'd be. That'd be like a life sentence. You'd be doing probably at least a nickel yeah for that no i think i mean i'm not saying it's something to like be proud of but i do think that you've got to know the limits like you said what's the worst that can happen you've got to find out what the worst that can happen is to to dial it back well it teaches you, you gotta have a, right? it teaches yeah. you yeah. yeah teaches you the limit yep you're like oh fuck it that's the limit apparently they keep that shit on like <laughs> this the is a computer or yeah something. this is <laughs> as much <laughs> bad as i want in my life this is the yeah. limit yeah. well it's it's the fuck around find out fuck around a little more find out a little more yeah find yeah, out I, a little more I think that that might also be something that maybe I pull back a little bit on being bitches these days is the fact that people go a little further now because they're desensitized. Yeah. Right. So where they don't get to, to find get out in a fight and you, yeah, you might, well, they you never get, get to find out. Yeah. For 100%. No, because people go a lot further than they need to, you know, kicking yeah. somebody's ass is not the same as it was back in the eighties. We spent no, out. No, they, they get brutal. They're just like trying to kill you. It's like, Right. Just, hey, how about just punch the guy yeah, just and to show him a lesson? You don't have to take we it spent, back and go grab a gun. We spent the entire like, year yeah. of 2023. So it was our New Year's resolution as a whole. 2023 was the year yeah. of, like, it was, it was writing the, the ship. Writing the ship. It was like, you can't just do stupid shit and not be called out. Everybody else is afraid to call you out. And it wasn't physical altercations, but it was, it was verbal of calling somebody out for doing something stupid in a public place, right? Traditionally, restaurants and airports was and, the main thing. Okay. Yeah. And if people were doing something fucking stupid that was obvious to the public, the general public was uncomfortable for what that person was doing. You let them know. We spent 2023 of letting that person know that's not okay, right? And be, being too loud on an airport or waiting on things, all that kind of shit. We spent the entire- Good for you guys. I, yeah. I honestly yeah. think it's made a difference. It's, I like it. I, Is that what happened at SEMA 2023? Uh, that was, it was <laughs> I think so. That was in there. Yeah. It was a little hey, bit I of, listened to the podcast. Yeah. I heard it all. Is Josh maybe went Josh maybe went harder than me and Phil on a lot of those <laughs> things. He was trying to prove some points. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, kudos was to I would have done the same and he was because I was listening to it and I was like, I would have done the same fucking thing. Yeah. I went I went ten percent harder than I should have at the beginning. But when the yeah. response back was not what it should have been, unfortunately like I had to find the rev limit hey, and again, there wasn't one I again. This is like, you don't have to justify yourself. Cause I'm on your page. Yeah. It's yeah. There's it's, a way to be like my bad. 
but it wasn't it wasn't yeah, it wasn't that. none of that none of that now it's now and again it was like what's the worst that could happen i mean it <laughs> it could have went worse yeah, you were with your friends i mean yeah, right? I'm, I'm, I mean, that didn't go as bad as it could have it it was on the cusp of going real, real bad. Yeah, they, I mean, they got metal detectors, so yeah. like they probably weren't <laughs> armed. It could have went worse. But. <laughs> it is. It is interesting when you approach things that way, just to see like how those situations work out. Because it's 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 everything. Like you're standing in the. I had one. I'm standing in the fucking uh, security line, right? And this dude behind me just keeps like hitting me in the Achilles with his Ugh. bag. And finally, I turn around. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Are you in a hurry? And it like everybody. We're it, all going it, to the same it place. really like puts them in check like because they're oh I'm, I'm i'm sorry i didn't realize it's it, a rally call because there's other people felt, walking around they're like oh yeah fuck that dude yeah yeah exactly, Fucking, exactly. Be normal. we felt it was it, we were doing the world of justice it was our calling right right <laughs> 2023 like, yeah. and i like that get off my lawn i like yeah. that it because was there, call it how you see it there were uh, situations where there'd be some dudes like Oh yeah, 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 fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. With, I'm with yeah. them. We don't know each other, yeah. but fuck yeah. yeah, I'm with these guys. Put some fucking headphones in or turn that shit off. Yeah. It's way too fucking loud. Like we're all trying to have our own conversations. I here. like that. Yeah, I like that. It was. It was Call good. people out. It, it needs to happen every now and then. You, but that was I mean, to you your if, point. Like, if people, somebody did it I'm to too you, nice. somebody did it to you, you'd be like, oh, "I'm sorry, sorry." Oh. oh, Charity and I flew out here on a uh, on a flight direct and. Uh, the people in front of us in first class had their, we were, haven't even taken off yet. In fact, they're still going around getting the cocktails and stuff. And both of them have their, they're full lounged out. I'm trying to get into my seat and put my stuff under my, you know, get my headphones out and put my backpack under the thing. And you I'm, do I'm that like, a little, and little and rougher got, than normal. And I got their, their backrest and their head <laughs> is right here. And I'm, like, the back of the seat. Hey, mind? And, I, and I'm like this close to just going, Hey, can you give me a little fucking space to yeah. like get settled in and there? Yeah. And, and I just, I refrained from it. I refrained from it. I don't that, know why I did that. That's your fault, dude. You and then know. we landed yeah. and, but the stewardess never told the guy, Hey, could you move? Cause oh. if it was me, yeah. Oh no, I'd be straight up. Right. right. Follow the rules. Never said a thing to this guy. And I'm like, what's making him so special. He can sit right. in his fucking lazy boy in front of me with his goddamn skull in my mouth. But the thing, the thing that you enabled that now, like yeah, there's, he's there's, do it again. there's probably a okay. dozen yeah. more people. Oh, you need to straighten them out. And you know what? Yeah. Next time I will that. say something. In a like, nice way. Excuse yeah. me. Do it in a nice way, Dave. You're yeah. good at that. do it in a nice well, way, though, like because a, you're so pissed off that. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Dave, Dave is like, really you know good at that. I was he's letting it. really good I was letting it get me pissed off. And I, and I shouldn't have, and I didn't say anything and I didn't like make a big deal about it. But at the same time, it's something that, that, you know, you get people out there that just have no respect for anybody else around them. It's a spatial awareness. Right. Yeah. That's, just, that's I mean, the just way. Just being kind and just yeah. being, you know, commonly knowing that there's other people in the world other than you and right. don't be a dick. That's, and, you can like, approach it in a way that there's, it's non-offensive where you could just be like, hey, excuse me, I, I don't could, know if could it's you? just... Could yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, 100%. You just say, <laughs> excuse me, I apologize, but I don't know if it's just the fact that you have no spatial awareness or you're fucking plain stupid, but could you <laughs> just move that seat up? With all due respect. With all due respect, we, so I could get in. Should and you say all due, with all due respect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it so erases this, everything. Yeah. So this, I like so this it, is I like what it. happened. We, we landed, the seats were still back, and they stood up and got their bags out of the overhead, and I was like, excuse me, sir, could you tilt these seats up so we can get out? Like he didn't have any idea how they even got down that way. Right. I'm like, I, I went the whole flight. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm going to lean back when I'm in flight, but I mean, how do on. you handle the situation with the one motherfucker that leaves the window shade open? You ever notice that there's always one guy and I'm it's trying to watch time. a movie the and the sun's time. shining right mm. in and you, you're looking at it and you're like intentionally like, like you're trying to make them know that it's <laughs> it's bothering you, right? Because I've, you don't want. I've to... flown a lot in the last two weeks. Oh. I actually had that same thing, and I finally tapped the guy on the shoulder, and I said, "So how's said, it? Could could you shut that? It's like right here. So what's the etiquette? That's if it's what I'm the wondering. One right on you, right? You would ask somebody if you're sitting next to somebody. I always fly uh, t- typically when I'm going to a car show or whatever. Charity's always with me or my yeah. friend. I'll shut the window. I always grab the window because right, I'm not. Courtesy. Here's the etiquette. Yeah. It's 2024. But if it's somebody that's like the the window's almost behind them, yeah. I just reach up and shut the damn window. The and etiquette if it's is behind it's, me. It's 2024. I do the same thing. If they if they want it open, they're more than welcome to reopen. Everybody's and flown me about it, but no windows allowed. If you've never seen fucking clouds, Google them. 
There's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason to have fucking windows. What else are you gonna see yeah. that yeah. you've never fucking seen yeah. before? I oh, had a guy. Our, shit, our look at that. Those cars are fucking small. Yeah, yeah. we're fucking high. Yeah. All right, so it's put. Our yeah, last yeah, once flight. you go, once you go through the clouds, there's nothing to look at. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing Close to it. look at. I hey, I there's my house. house from here. Go, gotta go. We're out. Still had yeah. a good one. I, I had a uh, last flight. I had the opposite. I was on the window seat. I had the windows closed. About 15 minutes into the flight, guy just reaches across me. Opens the window and then just is trying to look out over me. Like I've never fucking seen that before. That was, I was crazy. Just, I was shocked. Wait, what 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 year was that? This is like yeah, just four weeks ago. So yeah. you didn't have to call him out. No. Yeah. 2023. Sure. Ooh, he's, he lucked out. 2024 is the year of tolerance. He, <laughs> <laughs> he lucked out. Is? No. He lucked out by a couple months. No There's, need for brass knuckles or a parachute. Just yeah. go. Because if that would have been 2023, oh, over have, with. He'd that's have, a, he'd have heard that's a look it. in the eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or just a, this is my window. As yeah. that hand yeah. comes across, just a... <laughs> no yeah out of my you're in my area that's like when like brothers and sisters this is an invisible line right do not cross <laughs> Touch this it. line come no. across see what happens no nope, yeah, nope. exactly. right here and <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it looked like. Send me, your, send me your number. I'll text it to you. You can look at it the whole fucking flight. You can hold my phone if you want. Uh, that's funny. Fucking moron. Dig that's funny. Uh, <laughs> best your, piece of advice. Email? Best piece of advice you've ever received. I'll go. I would say the best piece of advice was from my grandfather, and he, you know what? And it kind of just set the stage for me. He said, "If you want it, you just need to work for it." Period. And then it's just been that, that mentality for me. If I want it, I'll work for it. And I will work, I will work harder than anybody needs to work. I will worry about it more than anybody needs to ever worry about it. I will just make sure that it happens no matter what it does. It's not, it doesn't matter how many hours you put in. It matters what job you got done. That's how I look at it. Period. God, his answers are so poignant and so much shorter than mine. (laughs) I can go longer. I bet you. I promise. <laughs> so get that get that snowy salt back out, man. I, I guarantee you. A couple more, a lot yeah, more yeah, whiskeys. Yeah. 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 Where'd it go? You know, I've always been a big fan of uh, '80s uh, comedies and and movies and that kind of stuff. And I think Red Fox said it best, and it really kind of stuck with me. And I I say that to 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 a lot of kids that are in you know different programs, automotive school, whatever it is that they're into, to try and inspire them. And uh, it is that don't ever forget who you are and where you came from. Always look both ways before you cross the road. Don't drink, don't smoke, and don't lie. You don't have to remember as much. That was Red Fox. Hmm. But now, one, the, the drinking the thing, I'm not I really paying a lot of attention to that. <laughs> but I do look both ways Fuck. before I cross the road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, honestly, um, you be a good person uh, to everybody around you as, as best that they allow you to be. Um, don't cheat somebody. Don't lie. Uh, don't steal shit. Be an honest person, work hard, re- appreciate the people around you, no matter what their, uh, their background is, no matter what their, uh, personality is, because if everybody was the exact same, it'd be pretty boring to hang out with people. Yeah. So you have to be a little bit more acceptant and a little bit thicker skinned. Um, some people, the smelly ones, the, 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 the loud ones, the obnoxious ones, the people that are lazy, whatever. But when they're in a circle, they add something to make the background the way it is. Yeah. If it was all the exact same, it would just be a a a a a, bl- a plain background. There just wouldn't sure. have any spice of life. And it's those dumb shit things that you surround yourself with those people that drive you nuts and sometimes, but other times they're great mm-hmm. friends. You have to accept them and just and 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 bring them in and you got something great to talk about if nothing else. They pissed you off, they did something stupid, but you have something to talk about, but at the same time when they're fun, they're just a blast. Yeah, the spice of life, right? It's the spice of life. You can't you can't block out the things that don't always fit exactly in all of the cogs. Sometimes you get the the cog that doesn't quite click, but it's kind of fun when it finally does. And so by being accepting to people with different backgrounds, different quirks, different attitudes, different senses of humor and stuff, you just take it in and, and, and then enjoy what you got coming out of it. Isn't it like it's an oversimplification, but isn't it fucking crazy like the amount of these we've done and I'm, how many times you've spoke in front of people and doing stuff like the secrets to success or the keys to success or the best advice, all that can be wrapped up. It's just like basic morals. It always comes down to the basic, like just simple morals. 
Treat people how you want to be treated. Don't lie. Be honest. Own up to your mistakes. All that kind of stuff is just like simple, like thousands common of sense. year ago shit. Yeah, just it's, a, it's not sense, complex. Common, no, it's, it's not sense. complex. It's easy. Yeah, it is super easy to get along uh, when you just keep your head out of your ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah, if Fair. you're a straight shooter, man, and you're just like a straight up honest dude, it, it makes life a lot fucking easier. It certainly yeah. does because you don't have to remember as much. Right. You start bullshitting and lying about a bunch of, sh- and then all of a sudden you got to make sure yep. that you're not telling the wrong lie to the wrong people right. that know the difference and then ruin it for you. So, oh, take it easy on me, man. We got, we're about to kill the that's, bottle. So that, that's good, good right? Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's been that a was a really good. Again, I'm not a whiskey drinker, Same but uh, dude, I that's really enjoyed shit. just sipping this. It was good. It was good whiskey. It's really good shit. <laughs> we killed a bottle last night. Weird. We've got a so, drinking problem. Like, yeah, yeah, put, we've got a drinking <laughs> problem. Like, only, if, only if you run out. out. To put yeah. it in perspective, like I've had this same bottle. That's uh, it's a twenty <laughs> or twenty one uh, year at home for like I don't know nine or ten years that I right. slowly <laughs> yeah. sip. We had it because it's, it's two hours. It's like one of two those hours that, we killed it. It's like one of those that I'm scared to death that I'm going to finish it because you can't really get another. Yeah. Well, and we like, can't. Oh, yeah. We just killed yeah. that one. Well, it's really good. So hey, thank you for having really the good, good stuff. Fucking cheers. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine how we could have drank that out of a fucking golden cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we would have. Bre- way to go, Dave. Sorry. Wait, we're we're sorry. We, we could at least have like guacamole in it or something. Yeah, like that. Right, right. Guacamole bowl. Yeah. You know, so, out of the Riddler cup, we could have. <laughs> That would have been fun. Dude, that's a that's that would have been epic. That's a salad bowl. It's true. It's, it's big. A big ass bowl. And it's yeah. beautiful. I'm gonna put fruit in that fucker if it ever Do comes. Do you get up to keep shop. that? Or is that like no, I think, uh, I think Dave's gonna keep that. Uh there's, so there's, uh, there's two. two trophies. There's one for the builder. Uh it's quite smaller. a bit smaller. A little easier to manage. That's, see, I, I think and that's, then the, and then that's the big unfair. one has all of the names <laughs> on it from this. the previous there's, one. There's some shit that, that that needs to be fucking worked out. A smaller <laughs> one for the builder. I, I might. They, it's equal, if anything. Yeah. It should yeah. be Agreed. equal. Agreed. Well, you know, I might uh, whittle a little bit off of the bill if he lets me keep both of them. That'd be <laughs> I'll make a shrine in the, in the show. <laughs> this is this is what's funny. Just a small little step back. All of us are talking about like this fucking bullshit. Why can't we get the bigger one and stuff? You just built a car that didn't exist. You also could build a Riddler trophy. Yeah, you we could really build could. one a little bit bigger than what he gets. That's a good idea. Who was like it? Yeah, it's not. Good. There's nothing. St- it's a wood base and a fucking gold cup. Wait, like you just did. Oh no, this is 14. all straight billet chromed. It's, oh yeah, it's, uh, Steve. Steve does uh, all the shit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If you haven't seen one, <laughs> oh yeah, wow, <laughs> Dave, easy, easy. He's the most come on, easy. I we were friends. Come on, <laughs> Jesus, oh, come on. he's the most humble guy I've ever. Met. Yeah, Wait. I thought I was <laughs> to, bad. To, to be in humble, <laughs> to, to be <laughs> in humble. <laughs> uh, Nobody's didn't, Jesus. D- didn't we? Oh. Did we scan one? Didn't somebody ask us to scan one? Did green? Somebody remade that one. was a Shine Award. Shine Award. It yeah. was 3D printed. Did we scan it? I, what happened? I f- I there vaguely was, remember this. There was a bunch of those printed out as necklaces. Oh, don't oh think, hey, that's right. That's what it was. Hey, don't think we're not scanning it when we get back to the shop. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this already, went on. I already took measurements and drew it up. Don't even worry about the scanning. This, this is inside baseball for all the people. Yeah, this know is. how much shit talking is there this between This went builders. on for fucking ever. Because uh, Josh, when he's at Goolsby, wins the Shine Award, right? We never won a Shine Award. Well, he never let us forget that. Any time I would see him, I mean, there, I don't remember any interaction that wasn't like, well, yeah, there's no Shine Award. Oh, it was just Jesus. always the way. That's harsh. Well, you just put Shine then, Award in here if you have one. And then he'd just sit it. there and he'd be like, oh, yeah, I mean, Shine Award. I mean, they don't just give those away to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like just anybody can get one. They're uh, hard, like super yeah. hard to get. So we we scanned one and 3D printed it. Yeah. Right? And made you a little necklace. necklace. Good for you. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Jesse's just the same fucking way where yeah. like. It's, uh, we went, y'all went, we all win like street machine or something like that. He's like, oh, that's fucking cool. Whatever. They give you like a little plaque with it. So they don't give you like a big billet cup or whatever. That's just what they do at Detroit. Uh, the couple of times that I've won the Riddler. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is 30 seconds after a win. We're like super excited. <laughs> it's fuck like off. up and then way <laughs> down. Dude, you remember we were on a road tour and we were all fucking around with each other. Cause we, we ended up, it's a funny thing. We it's, all fuck with each other yes. like this. Right. Yeah. And there was some, some, a couple dudes sitting there and they were looking at us like we're the worst people in the world because yeah. they didn't understand we had to Jesse's, like, look, we're just, Jesse's over there he's like, he's like yeah this is number three it, it, that's that's what three more than you guys have because you yeah. guys have you guys have none right you have none 
<laughs> so one, two, three. Yeah, that's three more. So no Riddlers. Okay, all right. So where do you even put your guacamole? Because like, <laughs> <laughs> how do you, so you don't know how to big right. fan of salsa the, then, the right? The guacamole goes in the builder's trophy. The chips go in. Uh, the yeah, 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 right, right. right. <laughs> it's a much bigger ball. Now I've got it. Now I've got it. Oh, fuck. Just it's, saying, uh, from experience. Yeah, I, we say all that, honestly, to say, like, we, we have so much respect for the young builders coming up and we, we get questions all the time. We got a lot of listeners, guys, and it's so key to hit on the stuff of like you talked about is like, Oh shit, you got those problems too. Mm, it's 100%. also, it's also key to humanize and show that like, the Jesse there's greening sucks. People, all, <laughs> like, there's a fucking maverick. There's, like yeah. yeah, there's, there's, there's like competition. Oh, 100%. But it's so fucking fun. It is yeah. fun. Yeah. Everybody is fun. gets along, and it's the thing. Uh, like at the end of the day, like, we're all happy to be doing what we're fucking doing. 100%. So Absolutely lower, love this industry. I like, love this industry. Lower, lower that, like, stress level a little bit and, like, have fucking fun and know that you can come up and talk to any of these guys at any fucking time, like, and, and it just be fucking normal. There doesn't have to be that, like, awkwardness. Competition, he, he's a fucking like, dickhead. Oh, he's one of the Riddler three times. Guys. Well, have you ever yeah. talked to him? Dude, he's fucking cool. Yeah. Like, he's a super nice guy. You know, I think I think Jesse's moving on. I think he's going into the brewery stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's smarter gotten, than all we. Are. Honestly, he's a, he's he should move he's to a Portland. Badass. He he's should move to Portland. A, he wears master. flannels. In fact, he was in Detroit. I think he had a flannel. Dude, on. The you beard his, and flannel. His fucking facial hair. Bound. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I can't push that shit out Dude, for nothing. Portland I think, bound. For I think sure. the beard's fucking fake. I'm honest yeah. to God. I've it never like it's like a glue on one. It looks like it's been cut with a floby. I remember the the like a little. It sucks. It's the suck It's the it's the suck cut five thousand. <laughs> Dude, it's like the fucking shoreline. Like it is a definitive like. There's a, <laughs> an edge. You that just fucking, yeah, you, have, you have oh, earth and then yeah, sea. Right. We have I no just friends. Ran, I, I we have no uh, friends. I seen him for a few minutes in Detroit last week, and he's starting to actually have a oh, curl start. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so he ain't just oh, stopping at the full beard. He's Portland. He's, he's already, already bound. He's already looked at he's property. Such a I mean, he's ass. brewing. He's brewing. He's doing brewing things, I and know. then flannel yeah. beard. I he's agree getting, with Jesse's you. Jesse's getting yeah. better with age. I mean, he's aging well. That's a he's really he's, he's he's six months away from just carrying around a small axe for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I just yeah, I moved to Portland, like to fell a lot of trees. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> dude. You're from Coleman. Make some fucking beer. Call it beer. <laughs> <laughs> you should make uh, moonshine, a, not beer, right? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> I gave his I gave his dad a hundred dollars I don't know a decade or more ago to go make a beer run when we were at Loveland Colorado Good Guys. Oh, this was on the show too. I remember this. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's such a great story though. He uh he runs and grabs a uh, I said just buy as much as you can with the hundred bucks I handed him. Oh, okay, okay, Dave. He comes back. You owe me two dollars and thirty eight cents. I remember it was, it was a dollar. Like it was a dollar thirty seven. No, it was two two dollars and thirty eight cents. Some shit off of oh, over the hundred dollars. But he bought a shitload of beer, and I was like, <laughs> okay. Every time I seen him for the next decade, <laughs> you got my fucking money. <laughs> you get an interest charge, dude. Now? I remember that. Yeah, I had to give him a T-shirt it was finally, the but we paid him at the the triple of the, crown last of that year. Road tour that was in Loveland. The good yep. good guys road tour. It was tour. in Loveland. There's, we'll talk off air about things happen later on that <laughs> night. And but you you sat on my lap to make Dave jealous. Because he was talking to some fans. Oh yeah, well, then, in the in the fucking bar the hotel. Year? I remember that. This might be the same year that she rode back in Jesse's white roadster. That yes, uh, the shadow rod. Yes, uh, back to the, ho yes. the host hotel. And I'm like, and she got back. She won't ride in a car like that with me. And she got in with Jesse. I'm like, what is this facial hair? Yes, yeah, the beard. That's beard. why he. That's, that's why man. Dave has a mustache. Now. I remember we were sitting in the bar in the hotel, and like <laughs> there was like the little buffet or something like that, and there was like three or four girls or whatever. And we were busting Dave's balls about like, they have no idea who you are. Like, dude. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, I guarantee. And whatever. And then they ended up started talking to him. And it was all like, Oh my, my boyfriend loves your show. He watched us <laughs> like, fuck. They actually fucking do. Dude, that normally doesn't work. Cause you know, our demographic is like yeah. 45 to, yeah. and I'm pushing 45. I'm like yeah. 50 to 65 year old men. Yeah. It's a hot yeah. thing. Aren't, <laughs> weren't you on Deadliest Catch? Yeah. No, it's fucking <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Dude, what's the craziest fucking fan interaction story? Well, he's got the fucking keys to the entire country Shit. of Brazil, right? Yeah. Don't oh, you still God, have that was That's crazy, a man. Cool one. Went right? to Coscavel, and I was so worried. I, I'd heard so many uh, nightmares about uh, going to Brazil, getting kidnapped. I mean, all, yeah. all sorts, of, all sorts of. Oh yeah, no, no, the, the, harvest you know, how you harvest? Off, off, when you're harvested off camera, she said you're gonna be harvested. 
Yeah. So, <laughs> so she's like, I got a, I got, I got a life insurance policy that I hope he does. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you right now, I went to Brazil to Coscavel. We flew into San Paulo and then flew on to Coscavel to a big car show. And uh, they saved up for a couple of years. A lawyer brought me over there as a present to their country. That's the way that their culture is. It's, it's very humbling. I was so scared. I what took a shitty present. I took, a, <laughs> I took my agent. I took my agent. I took, uh, worse than I took a bodyguard that spoke perfect Portuguese. Uh, and is a great friend of ours, junior. And we went there and people were so overwhelmingly generous and That's wonderful awesome. and beautiful. I got there to this car show. My God, I had the Federales. I had an armed guard in front and in back of our van. Sweet. They picked us up at the airport. We're in a, a, a Peugeot luxury van, believe it or not. Like some Fast and Furious stuff. No, nah, no, nah, it was like, but put a table in there and stuff. We pulled in there. They have machine guns and stuff. This is my guards. Do you get to shoot them? No, 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 don't. So <laughs> I walk in there. Dude, the billboard in the front of the building was the size, of, literally, of a billboard on the side of the freeway. And it was just a picture of me. It was a good picture. That chest, that chest <laughs> starts <laughs> popping out. I, I, and they touch it all? Are you, the are you like, dude, I fucking They enhance like it. Yeah, no, they, they, they did like, Photoshop on a couple spots. I require I a in. bath before I go out. <laughs> no, I, so I, send in I, I re- wash my body. No, I wish. It was and, and don't tell my wife. So anyway. <laughs> She's off camera again, <laughs> hackling me. Uh, so, so I walk in. I'm I'm just so overwhelmed. They walk up and hand me a beer. There's a Volkswagen uh, single cab with a keg on the back of it. That's a brewery. Oh shit! They hand me a beer. Everybody's clapping. I'm walking through. They give me a personal tour, and then we go back to the hotel and they drop us off. We got a nice hotel. The the show. They gave me the key to the country. For God's sakes. Shit. What does that unlock I was exactly? Just, I was joking. It doesn't, it doesn't unlock, they got a lot of shit. They got you know a border what, fence and, or and, something and, over there? Like a border? I, <laughs> no, uh, I'm telling you, I was so worried about nothing. They are the most warm and comfortable people ever. Hey, and not to shorten this up, but I think you should just go to the last day. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the last, the last day. day with the yellow Lamborghini, okay, right? So, Tell the story about so, this. So oh. there I was. This is the best story. I think I have, it's the best story. I have pallets of gifts given to me. I, I've experienced their country, you know, going and checking out like the Capavara. Capavara is the largest road in, in the world is right there. It's like a mini cow. We walk up, we walk, I walked up really? and pet this yeah. thing. It was, it was so cool. It was the size of a golden lab, a rat. Like a mini so, cow. Really? It didn't, didn't give a shit about me. It could eat me in oh. a heartbeat. Didn't care. Shit. So the last day we're all done. And uh, they said, hey, so tomorrow we want to take you to uh, Wasu Falls. I think is the name of it. It's where three countries come together and it has the biggest waterfalls in the world. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Cause I have time until we have to catch our flight back to San Paulo and then back to the U S and Oh, by the way, when we go, uh, our friend here is going to give you a Lamborghini Aventador to drive out there. It's two hours. I'm like, Okay. Really? Yeah. This is a real thing. Eight, so You're like, all awesome. Right? Than that. <laughs> <laughs> I wake okay. up. We got, we got to leave early. So six o'clock in the morning, I'm waking up. Right. <clears throat> I'm almost ready and I have the windows open. I'm on the eighth floor and I hear this. Whoop, whoop, and I'm like, so I go and look out the window and it literally is from the most cheesiest part of any kind of movie you could ever think of. There's a yellow Lamborghini coming down in the middle of the city. There's not a car on the road and you can hear it echoing. And I look out and I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> this is real. Finally. Finally, I made it. I take, I, I, take made my, it. I take my bag down, and I go out. And Chris, my agent, he looks at me. He's like, <laughs> I put my bags in the van, which is going to chase us all the way to the falls. We have one day to go all the way out there, all the way back. And I'm like, this is the baddest, most unreal yeah. experience I've ever had. So I get in this Lamborghini, and I and I drive it. We drive the two hours. Chris eventually gets in a couple of couple of miles just to make sure that the guy knows how to get me on the freeway. I'm passing 14 foot tall hay bells waving off of these trucks in this Lamborghini just going as fast as I ever wanted to go. We get there. I've got the key to the city. Like, fuck. I, got yeah, I can do, yeah, I do what I want. Shit. Pull me over. See what happens. <laughs> that, the, this the is the key, key to the country. I have the key to the country. Right. So, <laughs> so now listen, <laughs> I got this guy's Lamborghini. I'm hauling ass. I'm following him. He's in a Volkswagen Polo, ripping, staying with me. This guy's just flying, probably wearing out every bearing in that car. 
We get there and we park and they back me up. We are at a, land, uh, at a landing pad for uh, tourist helicopters. I've never rode on a helicopter, by the way. I have plenty of private jets, whatever, but yeah. never a helicopter. They had scheduled us to take a flight over the falls in a helicopter. Oh, shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, I don't like I don't like roller coasters. But. Could have been yeah. how it's all ended. <laughs> Could have been. Remember that, remember Somebody that had the key to still. I'm, right. so damn, I'm so damn excited. I got this Lamborghini sitting out here. I'm being treated like a king in this country. It, truly. And they said, and so we're walking out onto the pad, and I was like, hey, there's three seats or four seats facing backwards, three or four facing forward, whatever, and then the front passenger seat. I was like, hey, make sure I'm facing forward. I don't, you know, I don't want to be getting like crazy sick or whatever. Oh, you're going to be facing forward. The pilot's a fan of yours. You're riding up front. <laughs> oh. No shit. I have a right glass. On. I got glass all around foot to head. And it is the coolest. Like that. Oh my God. It was so cool. What so there mean? we are. Take off. A Heights. More. And, uh, let's see. I yeah. Know. But well, so it was actually right so smooth. And this guy was so cool. We flew over the falls and then we come back. So we get back. The, the experience is still not done. Get this. I can top this. So we get back and I'm getting off the thing and we're taking pictures and we're going in. And as I'm walking in, there's this gal that looks like Snow White or Cinderella in a light blue dress with a tiara, beautiful flowing red hair, gorgeous woman. And I was like, the hell's going on there? But like, whatever. For a bath so, for three days. <laughs> Stop. Let me finish my story. Then you, then, you can, then you can stretch out or stretch your legs on this. So I walk in and I'm like, we're looking at the pictures from whatever. And uh, somebody comes up, uh, Mr. Kindig, uh, Miss Brazil would like to meet you. Miss Brazil. Miss Brazil. I mean, you have the keys, right? Also she's kind of known she's for doing her three videos. Pretty good looking women. She's doing her three videos to, con- to go and compete for Miss Universe. Shit. So no shit. I go back around and I meet up with her. Oh, she's very nice and very well spoken, perfect English. She goes, Will you wait here for me? I'm gonna take a ride in the helicopter and then I want to come back and I want you to take me a ride for a ride in the Lamborghini and talk to me. I love your show. I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? Damn. So I was like, Yeah, yeah, totally. And I sit down and I realized she said 10, 15 minutes. She's out there for like 25 minutes. We're getting ready. Apparently they had a big touring van to go drive up to the falls. And everybody's ready to go. And I'm like, she hasn't even taken off yet. So there I am. I start chuckling. I look at Chris. He goes, what are you laughing about? I said, I'm about to ditch Miss Brazil. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ditch Miss Brazil gotta, to take a drive in this Lamborghini. Gotta, she she I also said, I love, I love your show, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call me Dick. <laughs> Sorry, Chair. It, just, it was funny. I had to say it. So uh, there I was chuckling. I went and got in the van and I ditched Miss Brazil, went up and w- went over the falls and or not over the falls, right. but checked out the falls. And then it was funny is in that country, the number one television shows are automotive. Really? Yep. Doesn't matter. All the way across the board. Number one television shows that everybody watches. They're so into cars, that entire country. Yeah. The, the, the number the one TV show over crazy. there is bitch and rides kinder custom. Fucking. So awesome, I, I was literally like the Brad Pitt. Dude. Of Brazil, that that is fucking. Yeah, Brazil cool. is it was crazy. So cool. It was so like, so cool. I didn't go to Brazil with Dave, but went at SEMA when we're doing autograph sessions and things like that. Like, the Brazil presence is. I always insane. ask, who's it's watching insane. your country? It is They're insane. Everyone's in from Vegas. Brazil. It's crazy. Serious huh. business. Like, we'll cut this out. <laughs> said probably not. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, you think you could? How what? How long? If you put your efforts into, how long before you could take that country over? Well, he has the keys. Yeah. If you already got the key, Pretty like, good start. I mean, if I want to go back, just show there, up and be no, like, I'll, "I'll take this office. <laughs> I'll take this office. <laughs> this looks good to it's me. Nice house. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. Built in eighteen forty three. Who comes with the writers of the neighbors? <laughs> put, some, put some fucking clothes on there. <laughs> <laughs> close, had, close the robe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is my it's my uh, country. This is my, this is my shit right here. I'll, I'll tell you, we've we've had so many great experiences. So fast forward, that was before SEMA. Yeah. Right after SEMA, uh, we ended up at uh, the Adelaide 500 supercar V8 race. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah, they cool. brought us down there. We actually sent uh, my dad's uh, 57 Corvette and that 69 Camaro of uh, uh, Mike Vermeil's. Oh, we got a shit ton of fans down there. It's, we're, yeah, seven. We're, we're big yeah. in Australia. All <laughs> se- all we have a us. presence in Australia. <laughs> big um, market. Man, I'm us. telling you, yeah. they treated us again like you would not believe. We rolled into this fairgrounds, or well, I guess it was it was like a park in the city. They shut down the city. It's like a Grand Prix, so it goes around all these buildings. They do that when we come to town, too. So cool. 
this place was off the chain crazy about cars and it's the finals for the v8 supercars and i take a hot lap in a rainy day with the guy that's going to win the championship oh you were in the coke car yeah i was i was with uh <laughs> what the hell is his name uh I, I, I'll think of it in a second. This whiskey is really good. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right. All of it. The whole bottle of it. Was yeah, good. the bottle's gone. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> was good. The bottom of that bottle is really clear. So uh, we just we Kevin and I went down there. We had the most experience, a uh, wonderful experience. It was cool. We held we koalas. So I much fed, fun. I fed kangaroos. Did like really? oh, oh God. it was super. They showed cool. us the country. We're going back this year. It's awesome. It, it, we're not taking cars this time. We're going to go down there and just spend a little bit more time. But I'll tell you what, when you go down there. And you have a, what was that jet, an F-18? Stalling out like low. Oh, it was like an F-35. Off. Oh, my God. Oh, they, was, they, they like right buzzed the whole race. It was insane. For 10 minutes, this jet was doing Passovers on the start-finish lines. We started the, I started the race. If I walked out onto the track and looked at people, the entire grandstand would stand it up was that insane. way. And I'd point this way, and they'd do it, and then I'd do this. It was like rock star. Dude, that's that's awesome. Awesome. It was that the shit. craziest shit. At any point were you just like, did you think to be like, <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, uh, yes. I, yeah. yes. <laughs> Who is that fucking, when did that all start? The fucking wrestler. Uh, Degeneration. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. I do that all the time. Honestly. That's fucking the wild, time. man. The, to all that for, TV, you should see what happens with a podcast. Like it's, <laughs> We don't oh, even have enough time to talk and about the fucking crazy shit. You walk like, out of the Seven Eleven and some lady walks dude, up and slaps you. She's like, "You cut in line," and I was like, "What, bitch? Yeah, I have a podcast. <laughs> sorry, get yeah, out of here. She's got to give a. You don't fuck. know who I am. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'll, I'll go to the back. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to Goodwood? No, no. I've got I've, to we're, go to we're wanting to plan a trip to Goodwood. We, we should do Goodwood. We should do. We should do a little road trip. We've been on a road trip before, guys. We have. Legend store. Remember that. Yeah, it's, I didn't uh, get invited to that. Great time. Damn. No, you didn't. It yeah, that's, 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 I think well, that's when you grew your first mustache. Honestly. It is. Hey, we're doing is. we're doing a is. we're doing a semi private tour this year. Let's have do that. People contact our people. We yeah, might we, have, we might have we might have a car in the fleet people. that's perfect for that. Yep. Yep. Charity, it might be. We might have to ask well. Charity, dude. We'll take that fucking, because it's really nice. We'll take that Riddler car. It's got a bad name. It's, it's probably let's, not, but we'll, probably we'll take it. Car. <laughs> I got I got a car sitting on a roaster shop chassis to probably make it. The Charity's yeah. car is bomb. That thing's dude, the bad. It, it bad is bomb. It came together so perfect. Cool. Hell yeah. Kill, killer stance, fellas. This yeah. has been fucking awesome. Yeah. Thank you so I'm, much for having seriously, us. Seriously, love you guys. Cherish our fucking friendship between all of us. Ah, thank you. Love dealing with you guys. Anything you ever fucking need, you know what to fucking do. Cool. I need 17 chassis. This and year. we're going to figure it out. We've already got a bunch, yeah, Dave. Yeah, Calm yeah. down. Yeah. I'm going to get hate mail. We got a lot of, we got a lot of off camera talk <laughs> to do, all right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of a check before he changes his mind, babe. <laughs> uh, seriously, I, we could not be more proud of all of you guys' success. It couldn't go to either. fucking greater dudes. 100%. And your entire fucking staff, everybody I've ever dealt with. Fucking SEMA was a fucking blast last year. Your entire fucking crew, everybody. Your daughter, by the way, you don't lose her. She no, runs the fucking show. Ass. She has got her finger she's on the fucking... She's my Betty badass. She has got her finger on the fucking pulse. Yep. She hey, don't, she don't you just around. put the warning out, too. Don't mess around with Bailey. Nah, I wouldn't mess with her. Because she'll have your I don't ass. Mess with her. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, had, doesn't, she, she, she doesn't back down. Tell some people to keep their hands off the fucking doors, too. Oh, 100%. <laughs> she'll walk over. Yeah, she'll, put hand hand she'll, she'll put, put them in their place. She'll put people in their place. place. Let me see your hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't touch. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's badass. But uh, right back at you guys. You know what? We have all the respect in the world. You guys, you guys have done a great job with this company. Um, certainly, uh, you know, I've known you guys for a long time. Uh, a lot closer in the last probably 10 years, five yeah. years. But uh, it's been wonderful to see your success. And Appreciate you guys have it, a great, great, uh, great group of people. You guys build one Appreciate badass it. chassis. Well, and it's a, a and badass it's, car. It's one Appreciate of those that. things. And that whether you believe it or not, it's you guys are always people that we look up to. Absolutely. You know, like, we, we do yeah. all these things with our crew, but it's, you know, the Roadster shop is something we always chase after. You guys build amazing stuff. You guys keep this amazing business rolling. Tight and right. we know that it's not easy. We have all the same problems that you have. And, and we, you know, it's the feeling is definitely mutual across the board. I appreciate it, man. I love you guys, dude. We respect the hell out of you. Can't be fucking happier. I love watching your success, man. So keep fucking rocking. 
Cheers. He's, he's saying he looks up. I bet the angles change. You motherfucker. <laughs> <that red> <laughs> <laughs> he's standing on that red look. He ain't looking. Yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Hey, let's go have some yeah. uh, chips and salsa, guys. He's, he's looking. <laughs> Mike Tree <laughs> was just throwing the bowl out. Get the bowl out. Uh, <laughs> uh, big thanks again to Kevin and Dave. Remember, Bitchin' Rides can dig it on Instagram, right? Can yep. dig it. Uh, can dig it design. Yeah, can dig it design. At can dig it design. Yep. At can dig it design. When can they watch the show if they're not already watching? Give a plug. Every day. You can uh, watch it on the Max. We're now. Oh, we're on HBO. Are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Did I not <laughs> tell you this? Dude. Yep. So HBO merger. ended That's up cool. buying Motor Trend, and okay. I, I'm Opposite. on HBO now. I called my mom. I'm like, Mom. I made it. I'm on HBO. What time? what time? I think you can just get it anytime. It's HBO Max. It. Yeah, it's, Max. So it's, it's on Max. It's on uh, Max. It's, uh, it's like uh, the Motor Trend Plus or any of the Discovery Plus stuff, but now it's uh, Max. And and HBO Max. HBO yeah. Max. Brazil, it's just 24 seven. Right? Yeah, because yeah. you got the yeah. we got the Every keys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a key to this. Uh, I have a key to everybody's TV there. And I'm like, you watch this. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so we did the uh, the interview at the uh, Triple Crown show, and I happened to be watching it, and it's that episode, and I'm like. Pretty excited. This is like my first time on TV. Daughter walks in. She's 12. I'm like, man, man, check it out. I'm on TV. Oh, cool. Walks right up the stairs. <laughs> wow. like, no, no. I go, no, no. It's, it's me. Like, I'm actually on TV. Yeah, dead. I said, cool. And then kept what? Going. Oh, is America's oh, Most Wanted on? That's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> that's rough. That's yeah. Tough, you know man. what? Was, yeah. I deal with the same thing all the time, and... Phil. You know? <laughs> like, hey, chair, is my dinner ready? Now? I'm on TV. Yeah, I'm on. She's like coming right up. Well, cool. Make yourself a make yourself a hot dog at the next commercial. Yeah, you realize what they did for me in Brazil? <laughs> you have an idea. I'm, I'm going back. to a country, damn it. There's some Totino's pizza rolls. In the I started a race in Australia, and this is all I get for dinner. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to Oil and Whiskey with the Roadster Shop and Ironclad Original. If you'd like the show, leave a rating and a review. Thanks again, Kevin, Dave. Fucking awesome. We'll see awesome, you again guys. next week. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Thank man. you.